What is up, y'all? 
It's uh, it's your boy JG. That's me, actually. I'm the uh, publisher slash Commodore at AuburnSports.com, the aforementioned. Well, I just say that because it's on my little thing here. Uh, Word, happy Sunday to you. Happy St. Patty's Day to all those who uh, celebrate this fine day. I am I am green wearing the green tie and also the green wedding ring today, trying to uh, fit in. Although I don't think I have any Irish roots. Uh, does not matter. Uh, we're watching the Auburn Tigers play the Florida Gators in the SEC championship game. Uh, this is for all the whole bowl of Tostitos, and the Auburn Tigers are up 38-30 at halftime in a game that early on, wow, marred by Micah Handlockton's uh, injury, which was particularly gruesome. And I begged people on Twitter to not watch the replay of that, and I also told people on the site, please do not do that. Um, that was tough, man. So uh, that slowed things down and kind of slowed the game down. Honestly, even when they came back to play, I, I felt like both teams were being a little tentative. But the last 10, 12 minutes of that half were a lot of fun. Uh, interestingly, I thought Auburn was the better team. Obviously, they're up eight. In almost every way except Auburn was not defending without fouling, putting Florida at the free throw on just too much. And Florida has an 11-4 advantage uh, in transition points, which I would have never guessed uh, that Auburn – would be behind Florida in terms of uh, possession. I'm sorry, in terms of uh, points on transition. That is not – Auburn is the transition team. Uh, but that's the way it works sometimes. So, uh, Auburn has an advantage in this game uh, going into halftime. Uh, Janai had a really nice uh, rejection there uh, to finish out the half. And uh, I think there's a lot that Auburn can build on. Uh, in this uh, situation, Locked On mentioned that I need to get my leprechaun beads out today. Uh, I <laughs> I ruined them on Friday. I was going to wear them Friday, and somehow I pulled uh, I pulled the string apart. And the yeah, it, it's not it, it's in need of desperate need of repair. Uh, so we're just going to have to do with the tie and the wedding ring today. Uh, Hornacious says JGT, your roots are showing. I got I got a root for you right here, big boy. Um, also got some other legends in the chat. Of course, Locked On, we love him. Kevin O in the chat. Ravin, Solo Tigre. Wow, we got some absolute studs in here. Matt N is here with us. Tim the Tool Man. Yeah, J.K. Kelly is with us as well. So, oh, and Canuman. Canuman coming in from the West Coast. So, yeah, we got a lot of folks here. We're going to be streaming for the next, uh, I don't know, at least two hours. My thought was we will do the second half and then we'll... Uh, do some post game stuff and then we will turn the stream off chill for a little bit and then we'll pick it back up for the uh, announcement of the bracket at five o'clock central and then we'll spend some time after that kind of breaking down uh, Auburn's matchups uh, Joe Lenardi currently has Auburn as a three which is exactly where I thought they would be uh, but they're in a nasty region so they're going to be in the if, if Lenardi is to be believed they would be in the eastern region with uh, I think they'd be going to Pittsburgh in a pretty palatable pod. However, they would also be regioned with UConn and Iowa State, which is a team you do not want to be fucking with right now. Um, they absolutely pummeled, embarrassed, defamed University of Houston yesterday, a very good team in University of Houston. I think uh, Iowa State won that game by 25. So, yikes. I, I, not that every, There's a lot of people out there in the country right now that are saying Auburn is a team you don't want to fuck with right now. Um and I, I support that idea, but there are teams out there that have won even more games in a row uh, than Auburn right now. And because um, this time of year, just getting a winning streak is a big deal. Uh, I think UConn's won 12-ish in a row or something like that. And I think uh, JMU has the longest winning streak in the country right now, but whatever. John S. is glad you're on, JG. Glad to have you. T. Park jumping in with a super chat. And Ruxpin, uh, thank you. Keep feeding Broom. Absolutely. Do they have a way... To slow down Broom. That's a big reason why Micah Handlogton was playing early on. He's a guy who usually plays, I mean, he's like a backup, plays like eight, ten minutes a game. They started him today because I felt like defensively he would be able to give uh, Janai more trouble. Uh, unfortunately, he's out for Florida anyway, and they're playing the freshman, and he's, he's done okay, but I still feel like in this game, uh, like Ruxy was saying, feed Janai, feed Jalen, those guys, I don't think Florida can repel them. Uh, I do want to go over here to our uh, box score page. And you're saying, JJ, you don't have a box score. Yeah, now I do. Now I do. Um, some good things for Auburn, certainly. 
I mean, the free throw shooting is great on both ends, really. 10 out of 11 for Auburn, 12 out of 13 for Florida. And that's what I mentioned earlier. Need more defense without fouling. And putting them at the line 13 times is just a little too much. Uh, rebounding's dead even. I thought Auburn would have an advantage. Is it actually raining, Matt? Matt, yeah, it is. I can see it now. I look outside. I feel like it's been raining nonstop for like three days, uh, Matt N. A uh, canoeman uh, jumps in. Let's see. I'm sorry. I didn't even. I hollered out T Park, but I not posted, and that's 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 a that's a problem for me. T Park says 20 more minutes. LFG JDT. Hell yes. Uh, I gotta get a good sound extension for that or a sound. Oh, uh, what are we gonna do? I'll we'll get this one. I want to wrestle you so freaking bad. Thank you, T Park. Appreciate you. And also, Kanuman jumps in with a super chat to say, may want to change the title and date, smash like, uh-oh. Oh, God. I was in a hurry, dude. Thank you for letting me know. Yes, I see that now. I can do that right now. Golly. Oh, still got the date wrong, though. Da, 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 da. Okay. Thank you very much for that, sir. If I hadn't uh, had you here to tell me that, Kanuman, I would not have figured that out. Uh, so I got it. And Tim the Toolman also was jumping in as well. It should have gotten straightened out now. Um, some interesting things about this, this game so far. Uh, Florida's guards have not been able to drive uh, the way that they would like to do. Auburn has been essentially what BP likes to call building a wall and keeping those guys from being able to uh, operate, if you want to call it that, inside of about eight feet. Uh, what Florida has been wanting to do, what they endeavor to do, is drive down these these lanes and then dish is what they're trying to do. But Auburn's building a wall, and it's preventing that. It seems like their best drives today from Florida have been their forwards uh, driving, and they, they've been decent at it. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think now. Uh, Thomas Hall had a couple uh, that worked out, and Tyree Samuel had a couple that worked out. So as far as that goes, Auburn's happy defensively on that end. It's just a matter of got to just change it a little bit so you're not fouling them quite as much. Uh, maybe BP says, hey, if you let a certain bucket, maybe there's one or two buckets here, you let go and just don't give them the foul. Maybe that's a, a trade worth having. 9 of 32 from the floor for the Gators in the first half is definitely not um, – Typical of them, they've been averaging some, uh, certainly uh, above 90 in this tournament. And they've got 30 at halftime. For Auburn, 38 is a little bit lower than average, but not too bad. Uh, they shot 13 of 33 from the floor. Not too shabby. I did think Auburn without Handlockton in there would have an advantage on the rebounding, but at 22 all, that's the way it goes. Eight assists and five turnovers for Auburn. Still, uh, it's within an allowable range. I normally think of Auburn as being a team that finishes with 7, 8, 9, 10 turnovers, so they're on par there. And Florida has five assists and six turnovers. I'm not surprised at all by that. First of all, they only have nine buckets. And second of all, their guards are getting cut off badly um, when they're trying to drive. So if Auburn continues to have that wall built and, and able to uh, repel that penetration from the guards, I think Florida is just going to have a lot of trouble if they're going to spend their afternoon or the second half, I should say, uh, relying on Thomas Haw and Tyree Samuel to drive 18 feet to the bucket and finish, I, I I don't think that's a winning formula for them. I think Auburn needs to continue playing the good defense, try to accentuate any opportunities they have in fast break, and just play their game, man. I think they're playing their game so far, and I think that's the way that they're going to win uh, this title and uh, get into the NCAA tournament as a three seed. Hopefully not in Iowa State's region. <laughs> just, my, just my opinion. I looked at some of the other regions. I didn't think they were quite as nasty. So are you guys seeing the correct uh, title now? For the, uh, I don't know if it changes when you guys are actively watching the, the, the stream or whatever. Uh, also, we'll do a quick little reset here of the bracket. This is, of course, information that we already know because we're watching this game. But uh, Florida, of course, having to play their fourth game in four days. Auburn only having to play three in three days. And Auburn's probably one man deeper than Florida. I don't know if that really makes much of a difference. Of course, with Hanlongton out, that might make it two. Uh, my man, Hornacious, who I adore, even though I rag on him all the time, says I need to take a shot. So I'm going to take a shot. 
All he did was say nerd. He could have been talking to anyone, but I suspect it's me he's talking to. We are drinking uh, today and this entire week uh, the Eagle Rare that I cracked open for the game against uh, South Carolina. And uh, we do that. Uh, JK says, give me the Creighton and Purdue bracket. I would like that better myself. I would really, really like Auburn to face off with Trey Alexander, uh, who's the star at Creighton now. Of course, former Auburn signee from Oklahoma City. Um, and then he didn't show up because he got spooked by, I think it was KD signing out of the portal or whatever. I, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was a few years ago. And uh, Purdue, of course, just because my man Pipe's a big Purdue fan. And I do think they're beatable. Uh, Ed, Ed Eady, sorry, sorry, Tyler Eady, no, Zach Eady, is a real problem, obviously. But I'd still like to see Janai go up on him and see if they could play defense. Janai's a really good post defender. And uh, those guys have been locking down today. So, again, just kind of keep playing the way you've been playing, I think, and Auburn wins this thing without too much trouble. Just got to keep those guards from getting the penetration that they really, really want. Auburn has done a nice job of dissuading them uh, to this point uh, against their wishes and, and will, by the way, I should add. Uh, War Eagle 0008 jumps in with another super chat. He's been with us all week. Says, let's cut these MF nits. War Damn Eagle JGT, thanks for the show. Thank you for the show, brother. I'm going to say this about you right here. You could drop a tarantula into his shorts and he'll still be cool. All right, picking up the second half. It's like, oh, Aiden just hit a chef's kiss to uh, get this thing started. I'm a little bit behind where I, a lot of you guys are. I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it live. I had uh, slowed my, my thing down because I was listening to the radio and I was getting them synced up. All right, it looks like one of their guards got out and uh, got a penetration like we were talking about. Janai challenged him. There it is. Lee says uh, Desi Sills, uh, who, had, who was coming over from Arkansas, signed and traded in like the competition. Desi, of course, could not get all of his credits transferred from Arkansas, right? So he ended up at Arkansas State. And then I think he had one more year and went somewhere else. But, you know, interestingly, looking at his numbers from Arkansas State, he didn't end up being the player that – uh-oh, Janai. Ah. The player that Auburn thought they would be getting, uh, this kind of 3 and D guy. He may have been playing great D, I don't know, but he wasn't hitting threes at a high rate. All right, so I'm not surprised here uh, coming out of the break that Florida's just essentially going full kamikaze, trying to give their guards some confidence that they can indeed drive on this Auburn defense. Auburn got a little bit disheveled in transition defense right there, and uh, Clayton looks like he was able to get close to the rim. Thank you, Lee, for the reset on uh, Desi Sills and Trey Alexander. I know that was a disappointing uh, period because Auburn felt very strongly about Trey Alexander and thought that he uh, would be a terrific player here, which he probably would have been. I will sort of keep up with these scores, not like seriously every single minute, but I like to give people a general idea of what's going on. All right. And, of course, we're not at halftime anymore. We're in the second period. Nice little hesitation move from Denver. Splickety sploosh. He's been good. Didn't have a great first half offensively. Was still playing his ball defensively. Got He did a nice job right there. Picked up the drive. Still were able to finish it, though. Forty-three thirty-seven is what I've got here. Denver couldn't get two in a row. Now see, here comes Florida in transition again. Auburn's only got one player with his head back. Jeez, Louise, Jalen. I thought he killed that guy. It was a good challenge at the, uh, at the rack there. But again, in transition defense, Trey had his head back. Jalen did not. And then it's just like three on one with only one guy looking forward. Like only one guy to pick people up. So not great. It's been this way a little bit today. I don't know if you heard the uh, snippet 
earlier in the ESPN broadcast where they were listen, you could listen to uh, Todd Golden, and he was telling them, if you get out, if you get the rebound, get out in transition, go go go, which you don't normally think of a good idea on Auburn. That's not usually the way you beat Auburn. Is running on Auburn. Uh, I guess there was a foul there. It wasn't much of one, but I wasn't looking at the body. I was just looking at the hand. Thirty-nine forty-three is what we're looking at right now. And a silly steal. I didn't see what happened though. I was changing. Oh, sorry, Terrence Holloway was who did not have his head up. It was not Trey. Good call. Good call. Yeah, see, they're getting the drives right there. Aiden was playing a little bit off. And that's a drive that they really weren't able to get in the first half. That was kind of a cross-key drive, but, you know, he ended up getting a pretty clear shot from about eight feet. And they'll probably take that. Damn. Denver misses a uh, just a little jumper near the three-point line, but not quite. All right. Let's see what happens, guys. Hmm. Yeah, Auburn's three-point shooting has not been great in this game. War Eagle, zero, 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 eight notes. Got to hit some open threes. And Florida's having that same problem, too. <laughs> that was really funny. Oh, he, I, I don't think I've ever seen that, where the they were going to double-team Janai, and the guy who was on the first try, the first defender had to literally turn around and tell the guy to come. All right, Clayton just hit a three to uh, start to get some scoring going now, huh? Starting to get a little scoring. Aiden with a drive. Let's so take it to the UF board. What? Oh, A.U. Robinson's freaking out, meltdown and coming. Hey, man. This team doesn't usually do much of that. I'm talking about a full meltdown. That was a nice rebound for Florida right there. Looks like Cheney drew the, uh, the jump ball. It's a good hustle. Florida's going to get that back, but it switches to Auburn after that. Uh, Melee says, uh, "Just we just forgot to turn the D button on. It ta Auburn has a tendency to do that sometimes. Um, in, in, in situations where you would expect them to kind of do that, you know, like where they get up a little bit and they feel confident, they get a little bit slower or, or less. They don't concentrate defensively. But the good news is that they usually come out of that. Uh, they did not when they played Florida in Gainesville. But this game's already gone a lot differently than that game did. Nice dish by Clayton there, and they weren't able to finish it. Auburn's defense picked up a little bit there on that possession. I think Dylan got his hand on that. Trey, nice passing right there. Can Cheney hit that three? He cannot. Good positioning by uh, the white dude there, number 10. Yeah, Melee says re-nut engaged. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, man. Got to get those nuts dropped again. It's like the nuts are getting up a little too high, I guess. All right, so we're going to uh, break there. Let's take a look at... Uh, I really like looking at these second-half boxes as we move through the second half. Takes me a minute to get them pulled up, but uh, I think they're worth it. There's no doubt. I like second-half boxes. Christy uh, used to always print those out for me when I was coaching. want to do that well that injury to hand locked in the yikes dude I was just uh, imploring people like do not watch that do not watch that replay I made the mistake of going and looking at it myself and it was ugly you don't ever want to see a compound fracture like that where it breaks the skin that's just bad 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 all right here's a second half box so far Florida outscoring Auburn 14 to 7 to this point Auburn's still having that same issue we talked about at halftime. You know, three free throws right now. All of them unnecessary. 
course, you can argue that every free throw is unnecessary from a defensive perspective. Uh, they're out rebounding Auburn seven to three, including two offensive rebounds, uh, one assist, zero turnovers. Auburn one and one. Uh, Hornacious says Holloway cannot finish contested shots at the rim. It, it does seem like his percentage is low. He had a couple in the last few games where he did that and tried one earlier and then failed. So I, I think he's getting better, but he was starting at such a low percentage to, to begin with that it, it still doesn't look good. It's something he's got to definitely work on um, for sure moving forward. I, I, he's not obviously not a big guy, um, but you don't have to be big to finish through contact. KD doesn't have that problem. So it's something he's just going to have to work on in his game. I, I do think if he was better at that, he would be a much better uh, overall attacking player. You know, Defensively, he's, he's improved. Um, he's pretty good. Not awesome, but pretty good. Let's see, personal fouls, uh, four uh, called against Auburn, zero against Florida. But again, keep into context the idea that Auburn has been the one that's been panicky in transition defense, and Auburn's been shooting. I mean, Denver shot a three. Denver shot a 18-footer. Uh, Denver shot another mid-ranger. Uh, Janai had uh, a look in the, in the inside, but he really wasn't being fouled. So Auburn, if Auburn's just going to jump shoot, I mean, listen, man, if this ain't going to happen, but if Denver just jump shot the whole second half, like there would be no fouls called on them, probably, because Auburn's just jump shooting. You don't really get fouled on jump shots. That's just an idea. Uh, CDF, my man, we're just going to give him some applause right out of the gate. Give me that applause. Come on, man. Uh, he jumps in with a super chat. Super chat, excuse me, says, doesn't look good, folks. Fouling D and bad shots. You're right. So far, it looks funky. I think defensively. Uh, they probably just came into this half feeling a little too uh, confident in their situation, uh, having an eight-point lead there at halftime. So just got to get it, got to get a kick in the pants, so to speak, proverbially or actually, and uh, get that thing moving. Appreciate you, CDF, and uh, the exchange rate is going to be great on that one. I'm just kidding, bro. CDF, of course, uh, often coming to us from the great state of Hawaii. Uh, Terrence notes that he thinks that Florida is grabbing on defense right now and it needs to be called if, if that is indeed happening. It needs to be called. I haven't seen it, but I haven't really been looking for that. I don't get to watch the games as intently when I'm running the stream, unfortunately. It's just part of it. But I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad you guys are here. This is the matchup that Florida really wanted defensively. Uh, ah, Simo. Uh, it was Jalen against uh, Clayton and... He ended up shooting a three. You thought he would have driven there. Let's see. GW says, there's no way you can convince me that Aiden is a five-star talent. I've seen better low-rated three-star players. Interesting take. He's. I can understand where you're coming from. When you're thinking about a five-star player, you're thinking about someone who's ready to go right away 15 points per game. He really hasn't been that guy. I think confidence-wise, he got a little shook. I do like him though. I just think he's a little bit more of a project maybe than we realized coming, you know, out of the gate. All right, Florida playing four out. That was a nice kickback on that three right there, but he didn't hit it. And they're gonna get another chance at this. Oh no, they're not. This is gonna be C Mo. Yes. Hey, Simo's gotten to where he gives you a good play once a, once a half now. It used to be like one a week or one a month, and then it was one a week, and now it's one per game, and now it's two per game. Now that he's playing with, with Leor's minutes. You can't expect much scoring out of him, you know, on the scoring end, but he can get you some stuff in transition, and he can also play some pretty good defense, honestly. Yeah, just because he's got the buy-in, you know. Jalen, oh, ho, 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 ho. I feel like that foul on Jalen was not from the block. I feel like it was a uh, latent call from the the push as he was coming down the baseline. One man's opinion. This is a really fun matchup, though. I've talked about this before, but the fact that Todd Golden coached at Auburn, he considers BP a mentor. He considers Stephen Pearl a really good friend. These guys share a lot of information during this season. I thought Jalen fouled him right there, but. They share a lot of information during the season. These two programs are definitely friends uh, just because of the relationships the coaches have.
Let's see. GW says, what's up with the Florida point guard getting away with stiff arm layups? Dude, uh, the guy, number 55 from Mizzou, was doing that all day to Auburn. Uh, was that a couple, a week ago now, a week and a half ago, and they never called one on him. Sean East kept doing like a half flipper on him, never called it. He would use it as like a jab right to the chest. Literally knocked KD back one time, no call. I guess that's one of the things you can get away with a little bit as a point guard in this league. Of course, it's not something that Auburn's point guards do much of. Trey with a nice three right there. He can elevate and get you some threes now. There they go in transition again. Clayton made a mistake. Denver Jones is going to finish at the rim with a nice flush, and that's Auburn right there in a the nutshell, right? You get a three out of nowhere. You get a deflection in transition when you have your eyes forward and they've got four back, and then immediately in a transition and they finish. Uh, that's terrific, and Auburn has those bursts. Auburn's as good as anybody at just bursting like that. That's good stuff right there. Again, CJ, 6-0 on fouls, brother. I – Yes, it's a weird number to see, but Auburn's just like jump shooting. Auburn's not going to the rack right now. I mean, they're just not. And that's how you get fouls. You go to the rack. Florida's going to the rack, and Auburn's not. Like that possession right there. I mean, Trey hits a three, right? He's just he's beyond the screen. I mean, there's nobody that can even foul him if they wanted to. And then uh, Denver gets out in transition and flushes it. I, mean, I didn't see it. Simo's bucket in transition. I didn't see a foul there either, so... GW says Florida point guard stiff arms Janai in the face and the foul was called on Janai. Janai was uh, trying to uh, litigate that. I saw that after the uh, after Florida called the timeout on that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, there he is, CJ, who called in yesterday. We'd love to have him on the line. Uh, says nuts have been redropped. We'll give an applause for that. First of all, clapping because it's probably a good thing for the Auburn Tigers that that happened, and also because CJ's wise to have brought that up. He's been a fan of that uh, line of questioning or that since the game yesterday when uh, I think it was Janai. Could have been Jalen mentioned that. No doubt. And Spicy Pieces, that's Auburn basketball right there. It really is. Uh, Carter says, no, JG, it's not us complaining about not getting calls. It's the fact that we can not we can even take an elbow to the face and it's called on us. Uh, I just I didn't see it. But I'm, I'm running the show and all that kind of stuff, so I miss stuff. I, I acknowledge that freely. I think back to uh, when I used to cover Kentucky in the 90s and I was a student. There was no real internet. Nobody was using the internet. There was no Twitter or anything like that. And I just sat and watched games for the whole, you know, whatever, hour and 45 minutes, literally writing notes for an hour and 45 minutes. And now I don't ever write a note. (laughs) It's changed so much. The way we cover basketball, the way we watch basketball, how much basketball is available to us. Yeah. Yeah. CJ notes that the uh, the nuts dropping was Janai, uh, excuse me, was Janai uh, talking to Marty Smith after the uh, game yesterday. So that was good stuff. Marty Smith, by the way, a lot of these TV people I think are fakey and not cool. Uh, Marty is 100% the guy you think he is. He's a good, good dude. Really, really good guy. And he will talk to anybody. He will share information with anybody. He will help anybody. He's just a really, really good dude. So I'm just always stoked when I see him on TV. Mm. Looks like United beat Liverpool in the FA Cup today. I bet B Matt's bumming about that one. Carter says it's all good, Jay. Love the show. Love what you do. Appreciate you being here, G. I'm just glad. Brock says, Hey, JG, I am new. I am a Baylor fan. Glad to have you, uh, Brock. We were talking about Baylor yesterday. Uh, that was a really good game there. It was the first game of the year for both teams. Baylor ended up winning that bad boy up in, uh, was it, South Dakota? And Baylor's had some up and down, ups and downs this year, but Jacoby Walter has not had many ups and downs. He's been really, really good. A player that Auburn wanted badly out of the great state of Texas in the greater Dallas area, as I recall. And he's been terrific. And also Baylor was recipient of uh, – Davion Mitchell, many years ago, who left Auburn to go to Baylor. I felt like he was going to get stuck behind Jared, uh, which probably would have been for the 19th season. 18-19 season, I should say. Ended up at Baylor. Had a great career there. And uh, parlayed that into uh, becoming a draft pick of the uh, the Kings. So, no issues on that. Uh, Let's see. FJ says, I'm sorry if anyone can't see the bias from the refs right now. Needs lens crafters. Well... I wear glasses, bro. They aren't from lens crafters, but maybe they should be. 
Excellent positioning right there from Dylan, and they're going to call a foul. Finally on Florida, their first foul. Perfect position from uh, Dylan, and he, he did the right thing, made himself big. And uh, I, I really am not into the antics when Auburn's up so little. I mean, Auburn's up eight, which is fine, but, you know, doing all this stuff. I, let's, let's do that when we're up 20 with two minutes to go. Not eight with 13, I don't know. It's just me, though. Oh, man, Simo was open on that cut. Trey was just a little hesitant. Didn't want to get his ball picked off. Trey with another three, and he splashes another three, guys. We're getting postseason Trey right now. Remember how good he was in the Iowa game? Well, specifically that Houston game last year. Oh, Clayton comes right back with a nice bucket. Let me get back over to our main page here. Get this uh, straightened back out. I'll run up to 55 now with a really quick burst. They're at 46 now. Looks like uh, Florida picking up another foul. <laughs> Spicy B said reps had to realize they were too busy watching a sick team. <laughs> they were just in awe, right, of how quickly Auburn was scoring. So they're calling that foul back out on the – did he get the bucket on that? Because it looked to me like the, the contact was – 16, 17 feet out. Sweet. All right, then. Denver Jones, what, a 92% free throw shooter, something like that. He's pretty much cash money. I'm glad to see that our chat names are in green today. Wow, I jinxed him. I didn't mean to. I can't remember the last time Auburn had a, a lane violation that negated a, a shot like that, but. Oh, are they just going to call a foul on it? Jeez. Carter, I agree with you right there. He says, good things happen. When you drive with authority, you've got to drive with authority. Uh, yeah. Partic remember yesterday, Auburn, uh, when you're playing Mississippi State, you better have a real plan when you go to the rack against those guys. And they did. They won a very, very physical, tough game. And I thought that was maybe had been part of the reason why Auburn was playing so well in the first half here, that they were still in that, that gear. Uh, from playing Mississippi State, they seem to have slid out of that, uh, at least to start this half. But um, some really nice work in transition has gotten them a, a nice little advantage here. And let's see if they can just kind of extend this a little bit. Driving to the basketball, huh, JGT? <laughs> you drive to the hole, to the rack. All right, just got called another one against Florida. So that's like three in one minute for them. Todd is uh, not sure about that call, but. You know, Todd can do whatever he does. Uh, GW says, cuddles with my Shih Tzu and JGT basketball commentary. Life is good. Thanks for uh, listening to me, bro. I wouldn't listen to me. I don't think. Oh, that is definitely a foul. God, you're a dick. Just because you got Andy and Coach Randall and you've also got the ESPN guys. I, I personally wouldn't listen to. Not because they're idiots. I just get kind of tired of it. But I feel like it's, just, it's like too sanitized and they're trying to be like super nice to both teams and. I feel like on Andy's – I saw Rich McGlynn there. I feel like on Andy's calls – I mean, they're obviously pro-Auburn, but what in the world is that call? Hold on, man. Somebody tell me in a sentence what just happened. Uh-oh, Simo looked like he had been shaken up on that foul. Are they going to call like a hop step on that? That's the only thing I would acknowledge there. I, I, I don't know what, what – that's not a foul, right? I could have seen a hop step there. All right, 48-57. There's Jalen. Ah, oh, it somehow went out. How about that? Jalen's getting a little more assertive, though. I like that. Assertive Jalen is usually a winning combination. Whoa, that's your fault, dude. He was trying to do a little uh, burst up into uh, Dylan, I think, and just got himself knocked down. I'm glad they didn't call a foul on that. All right, let's see what Auburn's going to run here. They're running cutters coming off cross that deep curl. And Denver splash. Splash, 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 splash. Denver, man, continuing his kind of uh, second half of the season resurgence or just surgence. 
I felt like he was tentative for a lot of that, I don't know, the first two, two and a half months of the season. But certainly here in the last month, maybe three weeks, he has gotten much more confident. And now he's a catch-and-shoot menace. He's a big uh, part of why Auburn's been playing better ball in general lately. That's a foul right there, dude. <laughs> Did you see? It was just what we were talking about. It's that they only call it when you fully extend. If you just kind of do a jab and you just give it like a, a 45, I'm sorry, a 90-degree angle, they don't call it. It literally pumped him so good that CBM got knocked off balance. It clears out space for the shot. It's a foul. But, again, the SEC just kind of doesn't call that, and maybe Auburn's guards uh, should start taking that into consideration. Now, J- Aiden's not a driver. Maybe Trey. Uh, Stupup drops the panties reference. That's what we used to call it, too, man. If you could hit a shot, that was what we call it, panty shot or whatever. Uh, AU Taxman says that point guard loves a stiff arm. He sure does. I'm telling you, dude, the Sean East from Missouri, he's made a whole career out of it in the SEC. He just It's just this little, st- this little jab, and they don't call it. and Only call it when it's arm fully extended. I think it's a foul, too, 0 but they haven't been calling it. And I can't really judge if they do it, uh, if Auburn could get away with it because they don't really drive too much. The, the guards don't. Or I should say the point guards don't. Yeah, Spicy P, great reference. He says, that's such a foul. Mark uh, Sears from Alabama lives off that play. He does too. Yeah. Yeah. GW says, Trey reminds me of Andre Miller. I got to interview Andre Miller. I asked him uh, at the Final Four in 1998. He was the point guard at Stanford. I asked him, what was the toughest place, uh, toughest thing about playing at Utah? He was from Compton. And uh, his answer was hilarious. He said, the problem with me going to Utah was that every time I don't make it to class, they know. And I knew right away what he meant. And then there was some confusion about what he meant. He meant he's the only black guy around. So if the black guy's not in class, everybody knows. (laughs) They had to ask for clarification on that. He goes, well, there's not a lot of black students at Utah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's really cool. I liked him. Fun team to cover. Ended up getting to uh, interview uh, Rick Majerus, too, at that tournament, which is one of my uh, all-time great moments. 60 to 48. Yeah, I wasn't changing. I can't I can't really change it every single time. But thank you for uh, for letting me know that I was a little bit out of date on that one. Blake in the house. We love Blake. His positivity is amazing. We love having him here as part of the uh, Brain Drain family. It says, Ward and Eagle Auburn family. Let's, let's get this chip. Yes, sir. Love Denver Jones and Trey is coming up big. Whoa, man, we got to have a louder applause from Blake than that. Sure. There we go. Thank you, Blake. We love having you here, bro. We love the positivity, and I know this is going to pay off for you uh, because uh, you're carrying this team. I hope you guys don't mind my green Auburn basketball header there in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Just thought it would be a little festive since we're drinking today, right? Drinking that, uh, well, it's probably brown bourbon for me, but it could be green. I guess we had some food coloring. I do want to give a shout out to someone who's not listening to the show right now, which would be administrative assistant. We got a call that my mom had a leg infection um, that she was asymptomatic for her. but And so since we were about to start this game, Courtney went over to handle that. Turns out my mom had a really bad leg infection. Like she's, she went to the ER. I don't, she's not like in serious danger or anything, but it looked a lot worse than I thought it would. And uh, so they're going to have to get that looked at to make sure there's no blood clot so could please you guys continue thinking of my mom a little bit if you don't mind throw her on your prayer list just to make sure she's good but thank you to courtney of course i mean administrative assistant for handling that and getting that done getting her to uh the urgent care center and then on to the er today it's not a fun thing to do for my mom or for her but anywho hopefully she watches this and says oh that was really nice Warrigal 0008 says Pat Adams is horrendous. He does tend to kind of make things about him a little bit, which uh, we used to joke about with TV Teddy back in the day, Ted Valentine. But uh, now that Teddy's uh, retired, oh, my God, what a freaking finish. Did you see that? Wow. It was a spin, but it was the wrong way, but he still was able to finish it. <laughs> Amazing. Ah, oh, man, it was another 
opportunity. It looks like Chad was just trying to tip that to his teammate, but he instead tipped it to uh, Florida. And Aberdeen hits one. Should have played at Maryland. Yeah, that that uh, that reverse finish from Jalen was insane at number 19. Oh, my goodness. I love the cutters, the backdoor cutters. Some Princeton action right there. And Jani is definitely the guy to run that play. Has great vision for a big man. Great passing touch. Had a really nice pass yesterday where he he came up against a double team and he stuck the ball between them and then passed it. It was amazing. <laughs> Very creative way to finish that one off. All right, they're back. Auburn's back to challenging these drives again. That dude got absolutely straight cut off on that one, and they got an air ball. The ball was so errant that it actually was easier to rebound for Florida on the backside. Carter's ball movement uh, so much better now. It really is. Auburn's passing the ball with a lot of tempo, and they are incredibly difficult to beat when they do that just because they're going to score so fast. But I still think this Auburn team, the key is defense for them. And the defense, I think, has gone from like a – in the first half, I would have given an 8 out of 10. Uh, the first couple shifts of this half, I would have given it a 3 out of 10. And this last couple uh, possessions have been probably a 6 out of 10. So, improving. Denver with a nice dish right there. What a play, man. Auburn's passing is so good. Oh, Jalen just got run by. Janai with a nice rejection as a help defender. <laughs> He's not feeling that at all. <laughs> this takes months. They're showing the replay of this bucket. Oh, not that particular play, but the one where it went to Denver. It takes months to be able to see that play right there. Uh, Denver to uh, Janai. You got to play with somebody for a long time to just, for him to know you're going to be there. Really, really nice. Florida having some trouble at the free throw line. They had a great performance, 12 of 13 from the free throw line in the first half, but uh, struggling right now. Janai obviously not a fan of that uh, that call against him there. Snobburn says, is that John Sullen on the bench? It did look like him earlier. I noticed that. Hey, Neil Jones, the Welshman period is here with us. Says, evening, guys. A little bit late to the party. It's okay, bro. We're still We're still grinding away here. All right, 66-53 is what we're looking at here. Let me update these scores. Auburn uh, offensively really kind of caught wind a little bit. There's another another cutter and another finish for Janai. It's just it's too easy. I know this kills Todd. Auburn's spacing. you got to have great spacing to make those plays work, and Auburn's been doing a really nice job of that. See, these guards are trying to drive again, and they just haven't been able to do it. And again, we were talking earlier, the forwards have been the best drivers today. Uh, number four, number 10. Yes, sir. Neil J says he was watching the United snatch victory uh, from Liverpool in the FA Cup. Oh, God, he was about to defame that young man. Great pass and transition and a nice finish. That was a really nice break for Florida right there. 57-68. Auburn's still up. Did BP call timeout? Must have seen something he didn't like there. That pass for number zero was amazing. I guess BP just thought these guys were getting a little tuckered out. Yeah, that's fair. So you're going to have this timeout right now, and then it's like, what, what are we at, like the 8-minute eight, eight mark, 8.08 eight or something like that? So there's going to be another timeout, 8.18 mark, and there'll be another timeout after the next stoppage in play. So and maybe BP was thinking he could parlay that to basically one timeout for two and get his guys even a little more. Uh, let's see, Terrence says, I thought you get fouls called when you go to the hoop JGT. That is true. That is accurate. You definitely don't get called for fouls very often when you're shooting the ball from 22 feet. Chris says, how is that not a foul on that dunk attempt by Jalen? Uh, yeah, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't see the. I felt like he was losing control of the ball. And I so that's why I was not surprised to see him miss the dunk, but I didn't know if he got bodied. I'm having to go back a little too far, I think. 
I think we're going back. I, had, I went accidentally went all the way back to uh, Denver's Pass to Janai. Now oh, there's Janai's finish on the turnaround. Come on, guys. I can't do it. Sorry, guys. I couldn't get back to see it. Uh, FJ says these ra these refs are absolute trash can juice. Not even just trash cans, just the actual juice. Uh, Stuart P with us. What's up, brother? This is broom time. Understand? It is definitely time for broom. He's had a, a really nice game, though. Uh, let's see what he's got here. Second half, uh, Janai is two of three for four points. Two assists, zero turnovers. Auburn has eight assists and zero uh, two turnovers in this half. Well, that's certainly getting things back uh I thought I heard a sound. Oh, I did. It was the Spectrum Repairman. I hope he's not here to work on my internet. Because we got a show going, y'all. Let me get a second half box up here. You guys know I love second half boxes. Mm -hmm. Not second hand boxes. Second half boxes. Right. Pull that bad boy out, and we'll mount over to our box score page. Get over here, bro. And oh no, that was not good. And here we go. So this is just the second half box. Things have turned around. Uh, things have escalated quickly. Uh, Auburn was down twelve to six in scoring early on, but now up thirty to twenty-seven in the second half scoring. Uh, field goal percentage has uh, improved dramatically, I think it's fair to say. 13 of 21 uh, from the floor after a somewhat slow start. Let me see what it was. They started the half 3 of 9. Now they're 13 of 21. So they're 10 of their last 11. Is that right? No, three of uh, not nine, nine of their last twelve. No, ten of their last twelve. That's pretty good. That's a foul right there. Yeah, they've hit tw ten of their last twelve shots. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, some of these numbers here uh, still getting out rebounded, thirteen to seven. Not great. Uh, o of one at the free throw line, but and they're about to go right now. But again, they're doing a lot of jump shooting in the transition buckets. They've gotten behind the defense on a lot of that. There's no real way to def uh, to foul Auburn. In that scenario, I love the eight assists and two turnovers. That's the right that's that's the right kind of number there. Uh, they have three assists, three turnovers, which is, from an Auburn perspective, you like to see that too. So Auburn's just shooting the ball really, really well right now. And Janai short arms, two free throws. Ouch. Let's get back here. Uh, we just crossed the eight-minute mark, so the next time this ball stops, it's going to be a timeout. Oh, Janai said, just give me the little white dude and another foul. Okay, so here comes another timeout right now. He saw that other white guy, and he was like, let's go. Another uh, reserve guy doesn't get a lot of run. He said, I can take that dude. Yeah, he knows when he's matched up. Uh, when it's not Tyree Samuel or a Hall, he knows he's going he's gonna to drag. He's going to go at him. Uh, by the way, they're playing eight guys. And Auburn's playing 10. But uh, really, it's more like, no, I take it back. They're playing nine guys. No, they're playing seven guys in the second half. That's it. Let's see. Uh, Stupup says uh, UF4 has four, and their 21 and 10 cannot handle broom. That is accurate. So, as we were talking earlier, as Stuart P said earlier, and a few others have as well, Feed Janai. It's time for Janai to just eat them up, to be Pac-Man. Auburn's defense is really, really extending right now. And, and just, oh, God, it was a risky pass. There's no chance this kid's going to get a bucket right here. Absolutely 0%. And he did not get a bucket, and then Janai came down with a defensive rebound. 
there's no way, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I appreciate the ingenuity or the, the valor of that dude being like, yeah, let's post up Janai. It, it, it wasn't ever going to happen, but you do kind of appreciate just the, uh, the ingenuity. Oh, my gosh. Chaney with a turnaround from 14. Splickety sploosh, flibbity flubity. Uh, Chaney, man. Oh, my God. I, I, I have such high hopes for him next year. I mean, shit, he's good right now, but when he has all that more time to, uh, you know, get better with his game, he's really come a long way, guys. Come a long way. This dude's not going to score either. Oh, yes, he is. He had to do a fall away, but hell, man. That's what Dirk Nowitzki did for 15 years. This kid ain't Dirk Nowitzki, but the shot worked. There's no doubt about that. Oh, KD driving under. I thought he was going to pass out. He said, no, nah, I'm just going to reverse it. Puts another two on the board. Oh, boy. See, Florida's getting a little itchy right now. They're trying to push too much. And Janai's just getting these DRs and knocking them out. What, Aiden just get kneed in the thigh there? Is that what happened? There you go, Janai. Ah, oh, just got picked. Oh, 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 oh shit. Oh, my God. Chaney just defamed somebody. Oh, dude did not see that coming. I'm glad he didn't call a foul on that. Aiden did a nice job. Normally, Aiden fouls right there. And instead, he kind of backed off. And maybe he saw to the corner of his eye that he had uh, a trailer coming to smack that ball down. Oh, Janai with a little dipsy do. It was kind of a body feint. Acted like he was going to rotate outside. Then he came inside and just put that bad boy up with his right hand. Do you feel like that Florida assistant looks a lot like Chuck Person? I legitimately had to look up his name yesterday because I thought it was like Chuck Person was like sneaking in on the sideline there. 76.59 is what we're looking at right now. Man, what a shot from Chaney. You know, we've seen KD do that baseline drive a bunch, and he'll pass out to the three right there, but instead he just said, hell with it. I love this move right here. He flips out. He's going outside. Then he goes inside, finishes with the right hand. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Carter says, call that timeout, punk. And a stoop up reiterating his earlier position that uh, 10 and 21 cannot handle broom. There's not many that can, but uh, CJ, I'm with you, brother. I want to see that. I think I will be able to see that uh, that block from Chaney again in transition. And in my head, I'm thinking that uh, Aiden backed off that situation because he saw Chaney coming. Because Aiden uh, wisely backed off of that. He normally fouls right there. I'm watching it right now. Oh! <laughs> I do think he saw him because Chaney was right next to Aiden. And I think he saw Chaney with his eyes up and was like, you have at it, brother, because I'm not going to foul him and waste this. A hell of a play. Chaney's awesome, dude. We're already back to gameplay here. Uh, CDF, who was – he super chatted earlier. Of course, we love CDF anytime, but he super chatted earlier, kind of worried about how things are going. Now he says, if we can stay disciplined, we are going to be tough to beat. Auburn is playing some great ball right now. KD going to go for the throat shot. I uh, missed the three. That probably would have knocked him out of the game. Appreciate that, CDF. And the one earlier, too. And I just love your support all the time. Another defensive rebound, this time from KD Johnson. And uh, this time just running out on Florida now. Florida, one of 12 from three-point range. I think they were 0 of 7 at half. So they're 1 of 6 this half. Not much better. Yeah, I think uh, their point guard hit one that Auburn left open. Auburn's been pretty much up in their business most of this, this half, this game, really. Aiden going for a throat shot, missed it. Nice rebound by number 10, and I do think that's a foul on Chaney. We're going to have another timeout here. Let's see, Stu Pup says the CBM corner three yesterday. Uh, the two Caldwell baskets, he had that amazing little burst yesterday yeah that changed that game uh, and then this Cheney block right now will go down in Auburn history if we finish this yeah that was 
That's my favorite play of the game right there was Cheney smacking that ball. I'm not sure. I still think Auburn is at like this point probably a 93% chance to win this game, but that was a hell of a play. Boy, Florida missed another free throw. Ah, you know they're going to be struggling over that. All right, so Auburn's just kind of going to run this clock out. I mean, they're up 17 right now. Frustrated, I'm sure, that they did not win by double digits yesterday. And they're going to try to get back on track with that. I'm kidding. They don't really care, but they just won the game. Oh, Aiden split that defense. Oh, Jalen was about to get some. Probably wisely reached out and grabbed. And since we're at the four-minute mark, that's another one. Another timeout. So we will do our last box score look from the um, second half box. Let me see if I can pull this bad boy over. This has been a really nice half. It was bad the first four minutes. The first two shifts were kind of iffy. Maybe into the five-minute mark, but they have really picked it up. And they are now uh, essentially running Florida out of the gym. They just don't have anything to – they're just out of – they're tuckered out, man. They are tuckered out. Let's take a look at this uh, second-half box. As things stand here, Kurt Auburn now plus 10 scoring in this half. 16 of 26. They start out 3 of 9, so that's 13 of 17 from the floor since that start. Um, yeah, that's a winning formula there. Uh, nine assists and three turnovers this half, which is a winning formula. Three blocks, three steals. And then Florida's still got the three assists and three turnovers, which they've had for like the last two times we've checked in. They're not able to get the ball moving very much. 12 of 28 from the floor, one of five from three, um, one of 12 from three in this game. I don't necessarily think of Florida as a great three-point shooting team, but you expect them to be a little better than 8% maybe, or at least Todd does. And a four of nine at the free throw line is much better than what we saw in the first half. Uh, Auburn's done a better job of uh, not fouling as much. So, yeah, it's it's good time. This is a good time right here. Auburn's got a really good shot to win this one. I mean, you're up this much with four or something to go. Well, four right at four. You feel pretty good. And also the, uh, the fouls have, have evened up a little bit. I think, what was it, five or six to nothing early on? Now it's nine, six. Tim says run the score up. Not a chance in hell. This is the last team BP is going to run the score up on, I promise you. The last team in the country that he would run the score up on. And for what it's worth, he doesn't like running the score up on anybody. He's just not he's not into that. Let's see. Chip Chip says, all we're missing is the Jalen poster dunk, which he was working on, wasn't he? And then the Cardwell alley-oop. Need those, and then you've got the whole thing done. Yeah, that's like putting all the rubies together for uh, – Zelda, and then great things happen, right? Let's see. Stewart says it's a 99% win percentage on ESPN. I said 93 earlier. <laughs> I, yeah, with four minutes, you're probably right. They're probably right, yeah. Really nice way to finish this tournament out, though. I didn't necessarily know I was – I didn't wasn't sure this is what we were going to be seeing out of this team coming into the tournament, you know, because I didn't necessarily think that – there was a lot on the line for this team. I thought they were kind of stuck in a four situation, like that they were going to get a four seed in the NCAs. And uh, they, yeah, I watched them at practice, and they were particularly loose and and easy, easy going. And and I was like, well, let's see how this translates on the floor. And then they just crushed South Carolina. And I thought, well, yeah, with Tennessee knocked out, Kentucky knocked out. Oh, chip, chip, there it was, brother. Almost had the alley-oop to Dylan right there. <laughs> it's going to be a really tough play for Dylan because the alley-oop was not of great quality. But uh, anyway, let's go back to our main page now. We've seen that box score. Box score. Uh, let's see. Chuck says, Janai gone full God mode. He is. He's, he's getting very ambitious. And he should. He's, he's been playing some great ball, uh, really, this whole tournament. But uh, today he's been good as usual. There's a reason Ken Palm has him as the second most valuable player in the country behind Edie. And you could argue the most valuable player in the country under seven feet tall. Let's see if Dylan can hit this free throw. 
Goes two of two. Nice. Didn't used to say that about him ever. All right, Auburn up 19 now with uh, a counting clock, as Andy Burcham would say, under four. Now, see, to me, that's good. He got a little penetration, but once he got to the SEC logo, he had three guys there to wall him off, and then he was like, fuck, I guess I'm going to have to go up with it. And Auburn's fine with him taking that shot. Auburn just going to just gonna suffocate him now. Looks like Florida's on board, and that's going to be a wrap. The Auburn Tigers are going to be the SEC tournament champions. And I, I find it odd that they're like, oh, Tennessee's going to be a number two seed, no doubt about it. And Auburn finished one game behind them in the standings and then won this tournament. Like, is there really that big a difference between Auburn and Tennessee at this point? No. Oh, God. Dylan's going. He's going. He's going no matter what. <laughs> Auburn hits 80. Florida probably just needs to chill out and let this one ride. I don't see much upside here. It's a nice shot. Dylan was content to let him shoot a 17-footer. Might as well. Oh, Spicy P, I think it's a done deal now, brother. I think Auburn's a three. I would argue that Auburn should be a two, but that's not going to happen. They're going to be an under three, though, in my opinion. I think people are not going to be happy to see kick stave and a beauty. They're, they're, teams are there and do not want to be playing Auburn right now. They've got that look like Iowa State does right now, just a team that's like just absolutely on fire. And nobody wants a piece of it. Nobody. Nobody. Wow, what a tournament, man. Certainly their best tournament uh, since uh, 2019 when they uh, ran through that tournament and trashed Tennessee in the final. A, a good Tennessee team. This is a good Auburn, I'm sorry, Florida team. But Auburn's just got the upper hand here. No doubt about it. I agree that it's bench time, Stuart. It's time. You would absolutely hate to see like somebody important get hurt right now, so... Uh, Stu Pope says Auburn is one seed good. They're playing that way. They're playing that way. They're, they won't be a one seed, but they're playing that way. And uh, I think they're going to be a problem in this tournament. It's just that you just want to see what the matchups are. There are teams out there, smaller teams, that have the kind of guards, long guards, aggressive defensive guards that can just kind of muck up Auburn's the way it runs stuff. And also teams that are willing to attack them that way. A team like James Madison, a team like San Diego State, that could do some of that. You want to try to avoid those matchups. You ideally want to play teams that have smaller guards and and uh, are, are more of a finesse teams because Auburn can beat those guys. You, you want to avoid Mississippi State's just rough and tumble teams, rough ass teams. Dark Side says, "JG, take a sip." I shall, sir. I did have a chance to watch that game yesterday, San Diego State and uh, New Mexico Lobos. Uh, two teams that had, uh, well, obviously, you guys know I like San Diego State. I grew up on the bluff right across from where their school is, and I always thought I would go to San Diego State. Didn't end up going there, obviously, because I moved out of California. And then uh, Jamal Mashburn's kid plays at uh, New Mexico, and I covered Jamal uh, like very early in my career and like him. So... Uh, that's kind of cool, too. I think there's some other Kentucky tie to New Mexico. I just don't remember what it was. Anyway, they deserve that game. They beat San Diego State fair and square. Look at that. BP's getting a little. Looks like he's got a tear in his eye. Like he's just really proud of uh, the way this team has, has responded. I mean, I get it. All right. I'm going to get these uh, scores updated real quick. 84-63. Oh, that's 83-63? Huh. He's going to put Dylan back in, huh? This surprises me, man. I mean, he's taking Janai out, which is good, but 
I feel like it's time to start putting like Blake in and Carter in and you know what I mean? Spicy P says, peeking when you need to peek. Let's go ruin some dreams. I love it, man. <laughs> love it. Look at Chad Pruitt right there. Burgo. Coach Stephen Pearl. Everybody giving him congratulations. Job well done from Janai, no doubt. Dude, Simo's still out here playing for blood. He's not letting that uh he's not letting anybody get past him. I love it. There's a Kirk Sampson's son right there. Works as a, a student assistant with the ball club. Clayton getting some free throws here. Get this patting this pad the stats a little bit. Uh, Stu Pep says Broom is the best Auburn player not named Barkley in my lifetime. Shoes, I don't know, man. He is really good, though. Uh, Chuck Person was really good. But I, I think Janai's right there with him. I think he's in that group. I think he's, I mean, we talk about what he did in college. Uh, Janai's right there with him. I mean, the idea that you would have an Auburn player who's the Ken Palm number two player in the world, in the country, like, that's insane. I think it's the first time I've ever seen an Auburn player in the top ten. And that's since uh, 99. Well, they might not have been doing too much of this in 99 because there was a time when Chris Porter would have been something on that list probably. Also, Marquise was crazy uh, effective at times too. Yeah, Spicy, I was with you, brother. I thought Simo looked really good on that defense. Uh, Stu Pup says maybe not best but most impactful. I have to agree with that. Yeah, because Jani doesn't have that projectable uh, thing about his game like the way you would have seen with Barkley uh, and Chuck Person, but you just talk about a dude that's just playing ball for the Auburn Tigers. Oh, man, it, I don't know as though there's ever been anybody. All right, now they got Carter in there, uh, Carter Sabera and Blake uh, in there. So there you go. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking right there. No, they don't have Blake in there right now. Still going with Trey. Oh, they got uh, Jalen in there. Number fifty-five, Harper. I'm I'm partial to that uh, number. That's a number my uh, wife wore in college. Sixty-seven, eighty-three. I'll go ahead and update this. Not that it matters. Oh, there's your Dylan flush, or another Dylan flush, I should say. <laughs> He's so popular. I love it. Such a positive dude too. He's like the perfect guy to be popular. Oh, <laughs> 21 made a business decision there, and I don't blame him, man. <laughs> it was too late. It was too late. <laughs> Stoop up said Dylan was like, move, bitch. <laughs> Yes, double nickel. That's right, uh, double nickel. I don't ever call her that at the time, but I probably should have. Simo's had he played a great game tonight. I, I would give Simo a high grade, even though his numbers probably aren't that amazing. But uh, he 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 made a difference. He really played. He he gives you like I feel like he's in he's in gear now, and he's giving you what Leor gave you plus a little bit more. Uh, so that's a great thing for Auburn. <laughs> you guys are having fun with this. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are. This is fun. This is fun. Uh, they have 68, by the way. Look at my guy. No. Uh-uh. You're not allowed to take uh, shots, bro. That little number 14 dude, um, he plays really hard in practice. I don't know his name. But I watch him uh, when he's playing on the scout team. He plays hard, man. No one will ever play as hard as Samir did, though. He played in an era, Samir did, when he had to sit out a year when he transferred from VCU to Auburn. And Samir made it his goal in life to – that is a really meaningful shot right there with Janai and BP hugging each other. Um, 
Samir made it his life to be the biggest problem ever on the uh, scout team, and he just absolutely killed guys. So much fun watching him play. I was almost pulling for him. Like, you know what I mean? And a number 14, doesn't he doesn't have that effect. Uh, but he plays hard. Yes, sir. Justin O, Auburn Tiger fan, pulling for There's Blake getting the chance to bounce that ball a little bit. Big time win for the Auburn Tigers, 67. Whoa, how did I get Auburn at 68? Or Florida at 68? My bad. 86-67 is going to be the final of this bad boy. There we go, Todd Golden and BP. So there it is. Victory for the Auburn Tigers, SEC champions. Wow. I'm just going to kind of watch this for a minute. It means a lot to me to see all these guys so happy particularly the coaches and stuff, you know, they finally get a chance to feel like they've accomplished something, you know, really meaningful. Already got the signs out and everything. There's uh, my man Maddox who works hard as an assistant behind the scenes. Huge, man, absolutely huge. Stupup says the Orange and Navy Mist has ruled the North. Auburn, uh, you know, BP – was asking for folks to uh, uh, show up, for the Auburn family to show up for this game, and they absolutely did. Uh, Stoltz was saying earlier he thought it was about three-quarters Auburn, maybe more. And uh, it's not necessarily in Auburn or Florida like it would be in football. You know, you got a lot of neutrals, uh, maybe disenfranchised U.K. fans, uh, whoever. There's Bryant Smith in the line over there getting some hugs in. Uh, BP and Coach Stephen Pearl. There's Chad Pruitt. Uh, Ira looks like he's coming over there. Marlene, their outstanding SID, uh, right there walking with BP. There's John Cohen giving uh, BP a hug. There's Kirk Sampson in a rare, uh, looks like he's wearing a shirt and tie and a coat. We don't see that very often. And uh, BP's just got like this random Auburn hat on. I love it. <laughs> just like some rando Auburn hat. He said, hey, man, give me a hat. Not even a championship one. I like that. There's Kirk Sampson again. Talking to Simo. Yeah, BP's getting a little emotional. That's one of the great things about BP. He is a, he's a sentimental guy. Um, I always like that about him. He's got a lot of emotional investment in everything he does related to this team. And and uh, it's, it's, it's rewarding for me to see somebody like him, you know, get a chance to Win something big like this and, and get another dose of affirmation that he chose the right job, you know. He is definitely someone, uh, you don't necessarily meet them all the time in your own life, but somebody who's doing the job that they should be doing, that they were put here to do. He is definitely doing it. Uh, we also got a super chat coming through from CJ, who called into the show yesterday, did an amazing job. He's just giving it a war damn eagle. We'll give you a huge uh, applause for that one. Uh, Otag is with us. Uh, it says, big win. Listening to the drain on my drive up to Hoover. About to stop at the bottle shop in Columbus per recommendation for some celebration items. Otag, brother, send me a picture. I want to see what they've got. They are always so good there uh, for store picks. And I guarantee you they're going to have some good stuff. If I were you, I would take a very close look at that. They're going to have a yellow store pin hook. A uh, store pick pin hook with a yellow top. It's going to be an eight year. It is delish. Uh, it's going to cost you a few dollars. I think it's $95 for a bottle, which I don't normally tell people to get, but that was really, really good. And I've been sipping on it just a little bit at a time because I don't want to run out. Uh, there's the president of the university giving him a hug there. Uh, there's Coach Ira Bowman. All right, we're already switching over to the Temple UAB game here for me, so I'm going to wrap that up right there. Oh, okay, Chris M. says, Hat says Auburn being Auburn. I get it now. I didn't. I wasn't able to read that. Need those lens, cra lens crafters glasses like uh, was mentioned earlier. <laughs> uh, Blake R. coming in from the East Coast. He is fired up, man. He loves seeing the Auburn Tigers beat that ass and lay those nuts on the Auburn, on the uh, Florida Gators. So, JGT, just getting back to my hotel from work and watching the finish, even though I was streaming the game but not able to watch every player. Nothing like the drain the last couple of days. I'm here. Meow. Yes, sir. We love it, Blake. Thank you, brother for your support all the time, both here and on our bourbon show as well. You've been a big part of the family, and we love it. 
Yeah, OTAG for sure, bro. You got to uh, – yeah, I wish I could see that. I wish you could send me those picks. I'm dying to see them because I, I love being at the bottle shop. Such a great collection of stuff. Uh, spicy pieces, how do we watch post game? I don't know, bro. I wish I could. Um, surely, like, is SEC Network going to go to that maybe? Uh, and you'd think maybe something on Watch ESPN would at least have the press conferences or something, but I don't know for sure. Uh, I bet you the Auburn Network is going to have audio of that. But honestly, when they get up to the podium, it's – I don't know. You guys might not – I don't like podiums myself as a reporter because it gets a little uh, uh, hacky. The questions get a little hacky, and uh, the answers get a little hacky. Uh, Buck says, we need those Chris Smooth sound bites for this one. We sure do, man. Splash. <laughs> we going to get that ass clapper. <laughs> Chris Smooth coming for you noobs. We got a noob for Chris Smooth. It's because BP just finished off, man, in the SEC, and it, it's it's man, I, I, nobody here is going to be in this situation. But there's a lot of people in this league that get super super upset when BP has these kind of days. They still look at him as some kind of a villain, a guy who is unfailingly positive, uh, friendly to everybody he comes across. I don't understand why there is so much consternation over a guy. Yeah, he made some mistakes a long time ago and screwed up. Who among us hasn't? Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> CJ said he was going to give me some of those Chris Smooth sound bites, but I understand, bro. I mean, we all got stuff going on. So, anyway, <sighs> appreciate you, Blake. Uh, Blake Dupe, our other favorite Blake, not Blake R, but Blake D says, "War damn SEC champs, love y'all, my Auburn family. Let's make another run in the NCAA's. Y'all celebrate responsibly. That's what I'm talking about. Stay hydrated and uh, don't be a dick." Just enjoy the win, right? Not you, Blake. You'd never be a dick. But uh, people, there's going to be some Auburn fans are going to be a little lippy, particularly our friends over in the uh, who live in Georgia who maybe want to let the Georgia their friends who are Georgia fans know how they feel about winning the SEC championship, something that Georgia doesn't know much about. Uh, in basketball, I should say. Football, they do plenty. And War Eagle fan number one, uh, we appreciate you being here. It says, hail to the champions of the SEC, War Damn Eagle. Yes, sir. It is one of those days. It is one of those days. Stewart says we got to be a three seed or better. I would definitely agree that's going to happen. Uh, Auburn's going to get a three seed. It's just a matter of where are they going to put them. Where are they going to put them? They're going to put them in a in a nice friendly area, maybe West Coast, or are they going to get nasty and put Auburn in with UConn and some of the other Velociraptors out there. Who knows? Kenny E. jumps in. Kenny's been great this week uh, with us, all, all of our drains that we've done this week. We appreciate you, Kenny E. This is Warden Eagle. Love the fight of this team and our momentum going into the tournament. Thanks for the drains all season, J.D. Look at that. Kenny's not just been here this week. He's been here all year. Appreciate you, bro. Let me give you an applause for that one. And that's for the Auburn Tigers, too. Uh, GW, not a chance in hell, brother. I say that as an OKC Thunder fan. With the 11th pick of the draft, Oklahoma City Thunder select Janai Broom. Janai's going to be a second-round pick, I think. But that's better than I thought it was. Don Proper Dickin, one of our favorites. Uh, the guy is royalty in the south part of uh, Holland. The whole Proper Dickin family for years, for generations, have been ruling that area. With an iron fist, they're firm, but they're friendly. Don says, blue blood motherfuckers. Oh, can I say that word? I don't know. I think someone was lost in translation coming from Dutch to English, but uh, Don, we sure do appreciate you, bro. Always supportive here on the train and on our bourbon show as well. Uh, no regret jumping in. Uh, War Eagle, this defense can keep us in a game with anyone. We hitting shots, then we're going to win. That does seem that way. And uh, that's certainly what was going on today. The Auburn Tigers, of course, victorious. Uh, probably need to go ahead and change that, uh, that logo right there. It'd be pretty sweet. Or this uh, graphic. Auburn won the game 86 to, I don't know. I'm going to update our schedule graphic to reflect the true situation here with the Auburn Tigers being victorious in this particular contest. 86 to 67. And there we go. Yes. Yes. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get this uh, 
I don't want this out of date schedule to be on the front page. It really gives me problems in my head. I don't like it. So let's go ahead and kill that and uh, move it over so that we have. F oh, and I, you know what I didn't do? You know what I didn't do? I didn't change the the uh, the record. Where's my intern? <laughs> Twenty seven and seven is where the Auburn Tigers are at now. Sorry, guys. This is what happens when I do it live and I'm doing it by myself. Uh, wifey is uh, working with my mom right now to deal with her uh, infection, leg infection. All right, here we go. Oh, snap. Danny's jumped in, too. I got to get over to this ASAFP. There we go, guys. It's all updated now. Uh, reflecting Auburn's uh, torrid run through the SEC tournament to win three in a row. Uh, only one of them even close. Auburn is now victorious in six in a row. It's one of the longest winning streaks in the country. And that's uh, that's really something special there. Danny H. jumps in with a super chat, says, I grew up a football fan. Bruce Pearl has made me a basketball fan. War Eagle. That's what I'm talking about right there. Glad to see you coming around, man. Um, it's probably a good thing because uh, you're watching one of the really, truly excellent basketball coaches uh, in the country ply his trade. Uh, here at Auburn, and he's done some uh, amazing work. This team, uh, some of his best work, honestly, and uh, he definitely has his team playing the best basketball of the season right here. You know, there was a point there, if you look at the schedule over there, uh, they lose at home to Kentucky on the 17th. They win at Georgia, no big deal. Lose at Tennessee in a game that they played really, really hard um, and played well, honestly. Uh, you give up 92 on the road, that's not a formula for success. At that point, they lost two out of three, right? And you're thinking, uh-oh. I mean, they're good, but they're not good enough to hang with Tennessee and Kentucky. But uh, I don't know. I don't feel that way anymore. Uh, they've ripped off six in a row. Uh, the sixth of that clinches the SEC championship. So, pretty good. He's definitely got them uh, trending in the right direction. And, uh, Danny, I'm glad you had an opportunity, as an Auburn man yourself, to uh, see this kind of go down. These are This is great. Uh, this is a great time to be jumping over to basketball for sure. Not that you're doing it today. I get what you're saying, though. You mean in a general sense. Uh, Cleveland Brown says, Warren, I'm Eagle Attorney Champ. Stay hydrated. Appreciate you, bro. Let me give you an applause for that. I took a slug here. Making sure we Gucci. Uh, oh, my. You're so right, Chris M. I changed that, and somehow it's, it's not reflected. It's literally on my screen as 27 and 7. Let me... Uh, I must have just picked the wrong one or something. Golly. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. Because I had someone point out earlier that I had the wrong title on this video to start with. These are things I would not have seen myself. All right, here we go. I just picked the wrong one. Now I've got it right. And uh, I even called this file WinCM. Just in honor of you, bro, for pointing that out. So there we go. Now we got the schedule right. And as an added bonus, we've got the uh, the record correct. So I feel like that's uh, that's that's we're, we're trending in the right direction here. Feel like a stranger jumping in. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, LFG, Ward Amigo, Ward up. Much love, Drainers, Swoogans, and Mama Tate, especially especially Mama Tate, among all the Mama Tates. Hang the banner. Broom was obviously MVP of tournament, but Simo is my clutch teammate of the tourney. Spiritual leader of the team, F. The haters. We'll give some applause to that for sure. I appreciate you feel like a stranger, and especially uh, for thinking of my mom, as you always do. Thank you very much for that. Uh, my mom's kind of getting older, and uh, but she's Gucci. Terrence says he's about to head out. What's the plan for the NCAA tournament trains? We're going to go full. We're going balls deep on the NCAA. We'll go full game for everything going on there. And uh, Although, I, I don't know how long we're going to be on the air for this particular show, but we will pick it back up this afternoon for the bracket announcement and then we will um obviously analyze that we'll take we'll take a look at some uh data on the teams that auburn will be facing and we'll just kind of fuss about the bracket and how much we don't like it because <laughs> i'm sure there's going to be shit about it we don't like um so we'll be doing that for sure snobbern says jg you look great today we love you war eagle thank you for the positivity bro you're amazing Definitely hit that like button, though, if you guys are watching and you're enjoying the uh, content. By the way, Jay Head uh, contacted me, which we love Jay Head, by the way, and uh, says he's ready to go. So that means we're ready to go. So we're going to bounce over to Jay Head. Raven has a super chat coming through. I will call this out when we get on the other side of this call, Raven. I appreciate you, bro. 
E.T., what's going on, brother? What's up, Jay Head? Awesome to have you again. Whew. Thanks for three uh, days in a row and three days well worth to talk to you, to speak to everybody in the drain. What a day, man. Hell yes. What a day. And before we get started too far, I do want to say thoughts and prayers to Micah Henlopton. That was obviously a terrible, terrible injury. I, I, I pray that young man is going to be okay long term and that he'll be able to play basketball in his future because that absolutely looks like a compound fracture and that's going to be a pretty lengthy recovery. Yeah, I think it punctured the skin there, and he was bleeding. That's not good. No, uh, n- not at all. And, and, of course, I think we all saw firsthand uh, what an injury like that with Anthony McLemore, what it can do to a guy. I mean, that's that, that's like a two-year recovery. But let's talk about Auburn today. What are, your, what are your thoughts, my man? Well, first of all, I'm fired up that they won the damn tournament. Um, I'm fired up that they turned it around after losing at Tennessee, even though they played well in that game. Now they've ripped off six straight. And I love that defense was really the, the, the catalyst for them again. People love to talk about how much they score, and they're a lot of fun to watch. But defense carries the day for this team, and they did it again today. 100%. I thought in the first half the defensive intensity is absolutely what put Auburn in the lead. Without that, we weren't shooting the balls as effectively in the first half, but it was just the effort, the energy, the ability to keep Florida out of the lane. I mean, I think you say, you called it in the last game that we had there, and, and, and we talked about it a little bit. Auburn's inability to keep Florida out of the lane and be able to get easy twos and kick out threes was the difference when we played down in Gainesville. Today, Auburn had great synergy and connectivity on defense. They switched off really well. They utilized their link to their advantage. They kept Florida out of the paint for the most part. Um, and, and realistically, just matched Florida, who's an athletic bouncy team, who's a physical team, and would not be denied today. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the defensive effort has to absolutely be applauded. And then the second half, that's when the offense got started realistically. I think they shot 60% in the second half, up their percentage to over 30% for three for the entire game, which isn't great. I mean, you would love to shoot a little bit closer to 40%, but being that you were shooting almost sub-20 in the first half, you love to pick up in percentage there. And I think probably that seven-point run they went on when Florida – Got it close. I think it was 45, 46 or something of that nature. It was within a point. And then Auburn just really turned up the intensity from that point moving forward, and it was all she wrote. Yeah. And BP was getting a little emotional there, man. I mean, I think he knows that he coached his ass off for this team, and they really responded to him this year. When you're a coach like Bruce Pearl and you put everything you have into a sport – you put everything you have into a team. It, you know what I mean? That's just the, the emotion that comes with that because it, it is absolutely watching a team play to a championship level when you put into it what this team has, when it's a team that cares about each other the way this team does, and you can see it. It's not fake. This is a team that really responds to Bruce. This is a team that Bruce loves to coach. And you and I both know there are seasons where there, you have teams that you like to coach and there are teams, unfortunately, that you don't. Um, this is one he loves to coach. He loves seeing this team be able to capitalize on the success he thought was possible um, and to be able to further cement his legacy. Now, I don't think his legacy means as much to him as it does to some of the Auburn fan base or what it might mean to me. But watching him win that SEC tournament today just – further pushes him forward as the best basketball coach in Auburn history, in my yeah. honest opinion. I know. He is. they got to build a, a statue for him, honestly. I mean, I, I really think that, we're at that point now. I, I think they will in good time. My guess is, knowing how humble Bruce is about certain things like this, he's not going to want that before he retires. That'll be something that will come at the end of his career, not right now, but I'm with you, Jay. Uh, they'll do something. They're going to have to do something because this is not the end for him. He's only 63 years old. He's got several good years in front of him. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to have to happen in the transfer portal um, during the spring or during this summer to make sure that Auburn's able to play at a competitive level. Moving into next year or at a championship level, moving into next year, but that's getting the cart in front of the horse. Let's stay in the moment right now and talk about where our feet are, and that's Auburn being SEC tournament champions right. and a likely three seed moving into March Madness. Yeah, what uh, – I mean, who's your favorite player to watch on this team? Because I, I, 
Janai statistically is the big one, but everybody can have – I think there's like eight different choices. It's Chris Moore for me. Uh, just because you're talking about a kid that a lot of people just, you know, they don't understand why where Chris was – getting the playing time he was earlier in the year and to watch how he was able to respond in this tournament, how he's been able really since the unfortunate injury um, to the young man that was playing over him. Uh, since that time, since that transition, Chris has really upped his game. When you needed somebody to add defense and physicality, he's been there. He's giving you clutch buckets. Now he's not the star. He's not your best player. But by far, watching kids overcome adversity um, and be able to play up to whatever their maximum capability is, you get every bit of Chris Moore every time he steps on the floor, and I absolutely love that. Yeah, he has been so good, like since Lior left, or Lior got hurt, I should say. Yeah. Um, he's really upped his game, and it seems like every half he gives you something, like a big block, a steal, and a dunk. Like he just, And it's easy to cheer for him, kind of like what you were saying, Jay Head. He's just... He's, he's very relatable. Very relatable. Um, you know, he, again, not the flashiest guy, not the most talented guy, but a guy that's just got the biggest heart in the room, and he absolutely kill, he absolutely puts it all out there on the floor when he plays. And beyond him, I mean, you've got several other guys. I love the way Chad Baker Mazar sees the game, how naturally talented he is and skilled. Uh, Denver has really come on. Uh, when Jalen is right, there's probably not a more talented athlete on this roster or player. And then Janai is just the most skilled big man that Auburn's probably had in my lifetime. Now, it, look, Walker, you know, he's he is by far and away, the, the, the ceiling is higher for him. But Janai, you get every bit of what he has available from an offense, from, you know, he is maximizing his potential of what he can be. And you just, as somebody that appreciates the game, you like to see that. Man, I'm I'm so stoked there's going to be a whole generation, I think, of Auburn fans, younger guys probably, Jay Head, but not necessarily, who look back on this team and think, this is my favorite Auburn team. Just because of the heart, because of the, the, the passion they show, the fire they show, uh, and this great run they went on late in the season to win this SEC title is, is uh, it's something that people are going to remember for a long, long time. I think so too, Jay. I, I think so too, and I hope so because they play the game the right way. They play the game for each other. They play the game and represent, you know, the name on the front of the jersey as well as the name on the back. They do it the right way. And you're right. Uh, I think, and I heard this not too long ago from somebody that I truly respect, but most people become, if you're going to be a sports fan, you become cognizant of college sports at about the age of 9, 10, 11 years old. That's kind of where you become a fan. And that's a whole generation of people that are going to see this team that are about in that age bracket, and they're going to carry this forward, and they're going to sit, look at Auburn for what it is right now, not for probably what you and I remember it to be you know, in the early 90s, right. which is not the same level of competition. Bruce has absolutely changed the game from an Auburn standpoint of how Auburn is perceived on the national landscape. Uh, you know, he is Auburn's version of Nolan Richardson at Arkansas. He can is. he get that national championship? I hope he can. Uh, I honestly hope This might be the team to do it, brother. They got a lot of depth, and they're playing some great ball right now. It would be awesome to see. And they really are playing some great ball. And what you hope, because they absolutely poured it all out in Nashville. I mean, they didn't leave they didn't leave anything on the table from an emotional standpoint. I mean, they absolutely played up to their maximum. So what you hope is, is Bruce is able to get to them and calm them down, get them some good rest, you know what I mean, make sure that they're ready to go and dialed in for the – for the opening round, and hopefully we'll get a Friday draw to make sure that they get their legs underneath them. But just, you know, can't say enough about the team and their efforts in Nashville, and then we'll see what happens. Again, I think this team is fully capable of making the second weekend in the NCAA tournament. Can, you know, I mean, they, regardless of the draw, they're able to make the second weekend, and contingent on the draw, they could go further than that. Yeah, I mean, they've got that kind of, they've got that kind of cohesion. They've got that kind of skill level. And you got that kind of coaching. And when you can mix those three things together, you have the opportunity to have a championship pedigree. Yeah. I I, I think they got bigger ambitions, but uh we're gonna find out, brother. Oh, I know they I know they do. I think I'm trying to temper expectations. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? When, when you and I are talking, I just, sometimes I want to be a little responsible with the things I say and not let the fandom piece carry me a little too far. 
Uh, but I, this team absolutely has championship aspirations. They're not going to be satisfied with anything short of that. Word. Jay, hey, this is the third straight day you've been on our show, and we appreciate you giving us time. Hopefully we can pick you up again for too long. Hey, look, you pick me any time, like I said, that you want me on the show, Jay. All you got to do is shoot me a text, and you know I'll be there, buddy. All right, man. I love being on the show. love being on the platform. Love you, man, and I hope you have, have a wonderful rest of your day, okay? All right, I love you, man. See you, brother. See you, buddy. Bye. Bye. There he is, Jay Head, a.k.a. Allen Head, um, uh, an absolute legend, uh, 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 key part of our community, um, and we love him on the show. Uh, it's really that simple. Uh, I love that he said, you know, his favorite player is Simo, and I, I get that. Uh, he's so relatable um, that Simo here in the last, what, two, three weeks, finds a way to assert himself uh, on this team in, the, in, this, in each game, and even though he's not, you know, super celebrated player, I'm certainly not in my own life. You know what I mean? I just feel like kind of a regular dude most of the time. He finds a way, and he finds a way to collaborate and make his his piece known. He he does something to help the team, and when you see it, it really sticks out. I mean, Janai hitting a turnaround jumper over some goober, like, that happens all the time. But when Simo gets an OR, sticks it back, like, you're like, hey, man, I feel like that's me doing that, you know? I don't know. Obviously, I'm not trying to say that I'm Simo. I'm not, but you guys know what I mean. Like, he's just very relatable. That's kind of the way. Also getting some uh, texts coming in from D. Lucky, who is at the uh, game. He actually went to the game with his fam, and uh, I think Easterwood was there as well, so that was uh, good. I'm glad there were a lot of good Auburn folks there to see that uh, in person and and savor that moment. Uh, Raven had, had super chatted right before we got on the air with Jay Head. Again, thank you to Jay Head for being on with us again, third day in a row. Uh, Raven says, so proud of our guys and our coaching staff. That was a hard-fought game. It's great to be an Auburn Tiger. War damn eagle. Take a shot, JG. <laughs> I was already sipping on this bad boy. By the way, we're drinking Eagle Rare. We cracked this bad boy open uh, for the South Carolina game, and I've been sipping on it very slowly since then. You guys might say, hey, JG, you could drink a little faster there, buddy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I had a little bit of a heart issue maybe three weeks ago. And uh, hold on a second. And um, they told me not to drink at all, but I still drink some. Hold on just a second. I got to talk to my daughter real quick. All right, guys, sorry about that. Had to talk to Maddie. She was uh, headed back. She's going back to school right now in the rain. She's going to go back down to South. So uh, we were able to get her some uh, goodies this weekend. I needed a new computer. We got her that and also uh, got the Owalas that I got on the uh, drop day on Monday. Got those to her as well. Whale Driver says, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Before we get to that, I also missed a super chat from Whale Driver uh, who says, when do we announce the Bur the Bruce Pearl statue? I laugh just because it's a funny question that uh, maybe, you know, Cohen ought to be considering that right now in the middle of this celebration. But uh, there, that needs to happen, I think. Uh, for reasons that Jay had laid out, that he, and I think this is a very apt comparison, you know, Auburn existed before Bruce Pearl, and Auburn had some really good times before Bruce Pearl. Uh, most of them you had to go way back to Joel Leaves being the coach. But uh, Cliff Ellis also won an SEC championship in 99, and had some good teams there as well, even a few before that. I and mean, they beat Alabama 94-40 one time, which I'll always remember. Um, but I feel like BP has taken that and just, you know, he's built upon it. And he's put Auburn. Auburn is consistently a problem in the SEC. And that's it's really the first time in my lifetime uh, where Auburn's been a problem in the SEC year after year after year. I mean, Cliff had some really good years in 99 and then 2000. But this is like over and over again. This is. You know, he won an SEC title in 19. He's had a piece of an SEC, SEC regular season title since then. Now he's won the tournament again. Like, he's – Auburn's a problem. Auburn is now an SEC blue blood, and and, uh, and it's because of BP, so. See, I, I can't tell what Spicy P's talking about. Um, 
And Whale Driver notes that Auburn was historically the worst SEC team prior to Pearl. Yes, there's no doubt. We, Those of us who are older, I'm 51, and there's a lot of folks in this chat and listening to this show who are my age or older. And there have been a lot of lean times, a lot of lean times, uh, seasons where Auburn wins, you know, three or four SEC games. And now that never happens. Auburn, you know, 13 and five this year. And there's actually part of me who looks at 13 and five and says a little bit of a disappointment, you know. I thought they would win. I thought they would win 14 or 15, honestly, um, which is an unrealistic expectation. But if you're ever in a situation where Auburn wins, Auburn goes 13 and five in SEC play, and you think it's a little disappointing, you need to give somebody some credit. And that person is Bruce Pearl and his staff, Coach Stephen Pearl and Coach Ira Bowman, Coach uh, Corey Williams, also Chad Pruitt, Mike Burgermaster, Ian Borders. Uh, Maddox does a great job as well, and everybody else that just helps, and uh, even even Bridget. Miss Bridget is, a, is an important part of it too. Yo, know, Malcolm says they used to give away basketball tickets. LOL. I remember, bro. I do. I really do. I remember they would give it to the 4-H kids uh, inside Beard Ease, which was just too freaking big uh, for basketball. Now they've, they're in a stadium that, or an arena, I should say, that that's perfectly suited for them. It, it holds about what between nine and ten thousand. Super loud in there, and it's just a really nice place. Uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, Talon says, Sonny Smith. Oh, wait, let me get back here. I missed that. Uh, our chat's popping right now. It says, Sonny Smith was the first to take Auburn to the NCAA tournament. Uh, he's the one who proved that Auburn could win at basketball. Of course, we love Coach Sonny around here. Uh, I'm, I'm a fanboy of uh, Coach Sonny, and uh, I know Kanuman, uh, who's in the chat as well, is a big fan. Uh, so, yeah, I mean – Coach Sonny definitely, uh, by the just by by the virtue of of getting Chuck here, Chuck Person, Chuck Barkley, uh, Chris Morris, uh, really upped the game and uh, got that team playing better and and uh, raised the level of the program. And then Cliff, I thought, took that and pushed it a little further. And then you know some of the guys between Cliff and BP maybe probably didn't push it up further. And then BP dug deep and uh, at a time when NIL was not going on when Auburn's uh, relationship with Under Armour was a negative for basketball. Uh, these days, I'm not sure it matters as much with NIL being the driving force and everything in college athletics, but BP uh, came into Auburn in a situation where it was extremely difficult to get this thing going and did a ton of work, uh, a ton of uh, just heavy lifting that, frankly, other coaches were scared of doing. Uh, he wasn't scared of it. He's not scared of anything, and, and uh, he got this thing done. So tons of credit there. I, I know for folks who maybe aren't Auburn fans watching this, they're like, oh, God, here goes another Auburn mod going on and on about BP. But guy, look at the just look at the data. I mean, he's he did a great job at Tennessee, did a great job at uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, did a great job at uh, Southern Indiana when he was in Evansville uh, coaching for them and got them a national title. And the dude just knows how to – he knows how to get people motivated. I think he would be good at anything and any managerial job that he had. I think he'd be good at because he can motivate people. He can read people. He's great at that. Uh, War Eagle zero 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 eight. Who's been uh, super supportive of the channel. He's been with us all day. Says was there for the Barbie years and BP's first, which gets him what the 2014 ish, something like that. At you taxman says if it weren't for the Under Armour contract, we would have never known Bruce because Barbie would have been an Auburn legend. <laughs> If they'd just been with Nike, they would have gotten all these players. Amari Stoudemire would have been an Auburn. Who knows? Could have been anybody. <laughs> T-Roy Tiger says, I have the perfect dumpster pad picked out for the Tony Barbie paper mache sculpture. <laughs> and I also feel like I've got to play this even though it makes no sense. And sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. It was mostly shit, but uh, yeah, sometimes they were good, I guess. Whew. Wow, what a day. It's kind of tough to take all this in. Not tough, but uh, I feel like there's a lot of layers to this. I did uh, contact BMAT and told him I wanted to talk to him, and he said, hell yeah. So let's get BMAT on the horn here, uh, a guy who's been covering Auburn almost as long as I have who can maybe help me uh, put into words just kind of the significance of what BP has been able to accomplish on the planes. What is up? What up, B-Matt? 
watching a little baseball now. Hey, the Auburn Tigers trying to salvage something out of this series with Vanderbilt, right? They are trying to hang on, yes. How is it looking? <laughs> not not great? Uh, it's 5-4, to four, but Auburn has given up, a, you know, just giving away some runs on some walks, hit batters, sloppy defense, that, that kind of thing. That's, that's not, it's not the way you win a game on the road in the SEC, so we'll see. Do you feel like Vandy's really good? I think Vandy is good. I don't think Auburn uh, is really getting good starting pitching right now mm. and, um, you know, not, not playing as well as they need to be playing. But, you know, it is baseball, and teams go through these things sometimes. They figure things out, and they get better. So we'll see what, uh, you know, Butch and those guys can figure out after, figure out after this week. And I'm sure Connor McBride, who's been the midweek pitcher, will probably be a guy that moves into the starting rotation against Arkansas Thursday through Saturday next week. Did you get any scores on the FA Cup? Yeah, I mean, Man, Man U came back and had an impressive win. I was impressed with them. Yeah, Not that whenever there's whenever it's FA Cup, they win. When it's something actually matters that nobody gives a shit yeah. and they get killed. Well, I think <laughs> Liverpool goes back there for the Premier in the Premier League game here after the yeah, break. Yeah, so I have a feeling I know how that'll go. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. Take but Liverpool by that, four. That was a good win by you guys. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, sir. I I rarely get to celebrate anything. Um, Kanuman <laughs> is excited to have you on the line. He says, "Weezy." <laughs> and also, uh, Solo Tigre says, BMAT deserves a Route 44 Nanner Puddin' Shake after that championship mm. performance. Yes, absolutely. Uh, where absolutely. is that? I could go for one of those right now. Hell yeah, I know you could, bro. I know you could. I was trying to find the uh, soundbite for that, <laughs> but I can't <laughs> find it. Damn it. Uh, so, thoughts about this uh, this game today? Uh, Auburn winning uh, yet another uh, SEC title. And B- uh, BMAT, uh, uh, BP, I-, I think cementing himself is probably the greatest coach in Auburn history. Uh, he is. He absolutely is. Um, he, he's been just absolutely outstanding in 10 years now. This is his second SEC tournament championship. Auburn has three total in its history. Um, you know, the game-wise, I thought the first half Auburn's defense was incredible. But I was really concerned at halftime because I didn't think Auburn took advantage of it. Right? They, they didn't play well enough offensively. They didn't get uh, enough points on the fast break. They didn't make that run I was waiting for them to make. And um, – you know, we saw it at the beginning of the second half when Florida is so good. They, their guards started taking over the game. They started driving, um, you know, getting fouls, making uh, some shots and stuff, got momentum. And then, boom, just like that, Auburn went on that run. I think it started around 14 or so minutes. Um, you know, it looked like Florida maybe got a little tired and Auburn just started making shots. And I think it was a 15-4 to run, if I'm not mistaken, and and they just took the uh, control of the lead from there. And then Janai Broom started going off. I think he scored eight of 12 points at one point um, later. And, and they got that lead up, up to 21 points. And, uh, you know, that was just impressive. Just impressive job by Auburn. And um, Bruce Pearl being so emotional afterwards, I thought was touching, you know, talking about his father and such uh, on ESPN. I'm here. I'm here um, in Auburn now. I'm not in Nashville. Um, Stolte and uh, Henry are up there for us. Yeah, for sure. But a uh, huge win for them, and and man, I mean, beating Florida, uh, Todd Golden, of course, a former Auburn assistant. I know that's kind of emotional for B, uh, for BP too, just because he's yeah. so close with Todd. Uh, Stephen Pearl's yeah. like really good friends with Todd. I know there's a lot of ties there. Oh, absolutely, and uh, we knew Todd well when he was here. He was a great assistant under Pearl. I can't remember where Todd played, but I think his Saint Mary's, first, uh, yeah, Saint Mary's, and then after Saint Mary's, um, he went and played on the. Um, uh, the Israeli team, I, th- I think, with, with Bruce Pearl. So I think that's where they first sort of connected, and uh, Bruce helped get him in this business. So, yes, I think they're very close. And I think Ty Golden is one of the best uh, young coaches in the country, and we'll see plenty more of him in the coming years. For yeah, sure. for sure. Uh, it looks like Auburn's probably going to be a three seed, B Matt. Moved up from yep. a four to a three from this run. Any chance they get a two? I mean, it doesn't seem that way. Um, you know, they were. Before the um, SEC tournament, it looked like they were one of the you know last four four seeds, and I think they've just managed to move up into the three seed. I don't I don't think they're, but you never know sometimes, right? I mean, um, I, I think the bracketology experts do a great job of figuring out who's in and who's out. You know, I don't know the exact numbers, but I say it's over ninety five percent, maybe higher as far as that goes. But you know, I think the seeds can can be a little bit tougher to predict sometimes. So I guess it's possible, but I'd be a little surprised. I think we I, d- I will say this though. Yeah, I do think the SEC is as good as it's been. 
depth-wise, and um, I think SEC is going to get eight or nine, I guess, eight teams in. Um, but I think there's, you know, more than half of those teams, including Auburn, have a chance to make a legitimate run this tournament, in my opinion. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Uh, I think, you know, obviously it depends on matchups. It looked like Joe Lenardi had Auburn playing in the East zone, which would match them up potentially with UConn and Iowa State, two teams that you don't really want to mess with. But, B Matt, I think a lot of teams out there are saying Auburn is a team they don't want to mess with right now. So, to be fair. Right. Yeah, I think that that first one, Lenardi, when I looked at it this morning, he had Auburn in the same little regional with NC State, which is a team that just won four straight games, including beat, beat Duke and North Carolina to win the ACC championship. So, that might not be the most ideal place for any team to be, you know, when, when you're dealing with a team that hot. But Auburn's hot, too. Auburn is red hot. Four of the last five in, in the regular season, three straight now in this tournament. Um, they, this is the best team Auburn's had, the best chance they've had to make a run, I feel like, in the NCAA tournament, NCAA tournament and since 2019. I know uh, the 2000, um, was it the 22 team that with uh, Jabari Smith? Yeah. They were, they were a good team, but they, they kind of faded a little bit down the stretch there. You never had that feeling that they were going to pick it back up and make that run, and this team certainly feels that way. Yeah, this is I think 2019 is the last time we've had a team that goes through the SEC tournament like this and just tearing yep. shit up and has that look of a team that could really do some damage in March, you know? Yep, exactly, exactly. And, um, yeah, I just when you've got Chris Moore making the plays he's making, right, those hustle plays, scoring you know um you've got eight now feeling more comfortable with three-point shot postseason Trey has showed up in just about every game you know making shots um uh, being a real calming uh you know person you know maybe Aiden struggled certainly against um uh certainly against who was the second round uh, opponent not South Carolina but the, the next game um uh, Mississippi State. Struggled early. Yeah, yeah. Struggled against Mississippi State. And then I thought Trey came in and did really well there. So, um, yeah, I, I just um, – I like all, all, all facets of this team right now. The depth, the way they're playing. Janai Broom inside. Denver Jones heating up outside. Those point guards being much more efficient. And, um, you know, and just the way they just get after on offense. I mean, yeah. on defense and offense. Yeah, they get after it. I'm glad, hey, you know, statistically they've been a darling all year long. Ken Palm, top six for like the last two months uh, in the net rating in the top ten all this time. And I felt like they weren't getting the same respect they should have gotten in the polls. But I think now we're kind of seeing that this is a legitimate team, like major, major, major legitimate. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, they show up in all those efficiency ratings, right? Um, you know, they play in, you know, one of the best leagues in the country, you know, I uh, I guess you can argue the Big 12 is the best, maybe, but the SEC looks really good to me. And um, they have done, um, I think Pearl and his staff have done a great job getting this team better as the season goes on, uh, understanding some areas they lacked in and really work on those, and they've just gotten better. Yeah, for sure. All right, B-Matt, I guess we'll wait now for the uh, the draw and see where Auburn ends yep. up. Um, we, we want to send Stultz as far away as possible. Is there a way we could send him to, like, Alaska, <laughs> maybe? Aleutian Islands? I think he didn't – didn't he say he didn't want to go to Pittsburgh and that's where they may end up? So God, I hope so. Yeah. I hope he has to go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> All right, B-Matt, I appreciate you keeping an eye on those uh, those Auburn Tigers baseball team. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, and then Vanderbilt's um, um, got runners on here in the six, so we'll see how it goes. All right, man. I will check All in right, with peace you. Peace out. See you, bro. Bye. There he goes, B-Matt. I don't know why I couldn't find his freaking banana shake thing. That was driving me crazy. Oh, it got, wh where's BMAT's shake thing? Come on, man. I, it's not like we took it away. I, I don't understand. It's, it, it's, I, I thought it was called BMAT Banana Shake. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. I guess we lost it. Love having BMAT on the air, though. He does an amazing job. Uh, here with us at AuburnSports.com, and we're, we're we're glad to have him, as long as we have. I don't know how we lost BMAT's shake sound, but we did. Uh, some ch some talk in the chat about the 2020 team, uh, the 1920 the team, that was playing really good basketball uh, late in the year. Uh, a team that had Javon McCormick, uh, as Donnie uh, Karabotsos uh, from the Big Lebowski notes. Uh, you're out of your element, by the way, uh, Donnie. But uh, notes that Javon and Samir were absolutely bad dudes. Yes, Samir, 
I was thinking about this the other day on my way back from Auburn. Uh, was it on Tuesday or Wednesday? Samir is probably my favorite Auburn player, basketball player ever, because I love the way he was so unconventional. And I don't know that a lot of people recognize just how weird of a player he was. Like, he would go to the hole, and he would jump up wrong-footed, and he would finish with in weird ways, and he would drive to the bucket five times in a game, and five times he would have a different route to the bucket. He would finish with different hands. He would finish this way. He would finish low. He would finish high. He would finish from the side. He he may be like the last Auburn player, because of the way the world works now, who literally learned how to play basketball on a playground court because kids like him these days play AAU. They're polished players, and there's a lot of really good things about that, having a chance to play more basketball in a structured environment to make you a more uh, refined player when you show up. Samir didn't do all that. Samir learned how to play basketball on a playground court in Philadelphia. And he was not as tall as he was at Auburn. I don't know, 6'4", 6'3", something like that. He wasn't always that tall. He he grew a lot later in high school, and so he learned how to make it happen when he was a shorter guy. And when you learn how to play on a basket, on a playground court, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, you learn some things that you probably aren't going to learn on an EYBL circuit or on AAU circuit. Just the pragmatic things that you got to do to get a ball in the hole, you know. He could finish through contact like nobody's business. And he had a certain flair about him. If we were playing uh, FIFA, we would say he has the flair uh, trait. Um, I don't really know how else to put it. I think in terms of FIFA a lot, so. <laughs> Kadoon says, West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground where I spend most of my days. Is that Fresh Prince? <laughs> I'm not sure, honestly. It probably is. Uh, Texas says, Samir was a street ball scorer. You say that a lot of times about people, and it, it's kind of a disparaging thing, like because it's like somebody who's not playing within the system. But I know exactly what you're saying, and you're meaning that as a compliment, just like I am. Just like I am. He just had a different way of going about things. And I, I'm sad. I will always be sad that he didn't have an opportunity to play in the tournament as the number one guy at Auburn. You know, in 19, he was kind of a, a peripheral guy behind Jared, behind Bryce. Um, He was kind of like the number three guy. And unfortunately, he was involved in a very controversial call at the end of that Virginia game where he kind of was in – that guy's space of verticality. 20, uh, 2019, 2020 was his chance to kind of make good for that. And he was doing it. And then it kind of went away. Of course, that was my my daughter's senior season. On the soccer field as well. So I felt that on a personal level. She didn't get to finish her senior year. And she was playing some great soccer too. So her, uh, her last game, she hit about a 30, 35-yard uh, free kick for a goal. I still have it on video. Thank God I shot it. So it took a lot of things away from us. I'll just say that. Uh, As far as the Auburn Tigers go, uh, looking really good. Six wins in a row. uh, Peaking at the right time, absolutely. Uh, Certainly the the team, the Auburn team with the most inertia since 2019 probably will end up with a three seed. I think they deserve a two seed, but they will probably end up getting a Three C J off senior notes that uh, Samir was also behind Okiki and uh, Wiley as well in 2019, a team that was pretty damn loaded. And Shum was playing some outstanding ball second half of February and into March. Uh, he was he had really found his way. Um, unfortunately, uh, went down uh, in uh, with an injury in the NCAA tournament. But uh, yeah, Kanuman says been here the entire time. Number twenty, talking about people who have gone wire to wire in our show today. We've definitely got a few. Kanuman is one of them. Uh, CJ's been here a long time, too. A ton of times. CFB Addict, my man, who jumped in late on our show, was it yesterday or two days ago? Says, Ward Amiga, we, turn, uh, we turned Bridgestone into Neville North. UF had no chance. On to Memphis or Charlotte. Six wins to go. CFB Addict, an amazing... Uh, member of our community at auburnsports.com and uh, also 
We love having him here on the show as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, I know we got a lot of folks on here today. I am the uh, publisher slash Commodore at AuburnSports.com, a great website where we talk uh, all the time about Auburn and other stuff too, but for real, it uh, it's, it's Auburn. I've been covering Auburn since 1998. we got another guy named Brian Matthews who's been covering Auburn since 2021. I'm sorry, since 19... 19- what am I doing? 2001. And, uh, yeah, I feel like we do a good job at AuburnSports.com. Of course, our friends at the other sites, we love them as well. But, uh, anyway, we would encourage you to come check us out. Uh, Mitchell says, "Woo, LMFG, that felt good. Glad to hear that. I'm glad you're enjoying this, bro. I'm so glad you guys get a chance to savor these moments. Mobile alum jumps in. We love Mobile alum. She says, hey, JGT, the best hair on the air. I'm, pr- I'm glad to be here for you. So how far do you think we get in the big dance? Won't this help with uh, AJ? I'm not even going to try that last name because I screwed up all the time. Let's call him AJD. Uh, AJD's uh, recruitment. Of course, AJD is the number one player in this next coming up class. <coughs> I've got a call coming in from one of the Madison goats. I've got to take this one. We've got Easterwood on the line. What up, Easter? Hey, also got Weeks 12 in the car with me on the way back from the game. Word. How you doing, bro? Pretty well. A little, little uh, horse, but uh, it was a good game. Man, I feel like I was texting with you earlier today, bro. Yeah. I, uh, I uh, got there early. The uh, Auburn crowd was massive. Uh, massive home court advantage on a neutral site. Um, uh, we were about uh, 20 feet away from the injury, and it was mm. uh, it was one of the worst sports injuries I've ever seen alive in person. Mm. Awful. Awful. Um, the medical staff uh, immediately went into action on that. It was it was it was pretty rough. So yeah, it, it puts a little bit of a a, a negative uh, vibe on the whole day. But uh, yeah, they uh, yeah. So hopefully he gets past that. That'd be good. I mean, dude, he broke the skin on that bad boy, so it's going to be a little bit of a recovery there. Oh yeah, it was it was it was nasty. So, um, but uh, I, I think we had uh, my personal MVP of the game was Chris Moore. And his uh, limited uh, minutes, he made a difference uh, both emotionally and uh, presence known with the rebound. I think he had seven rebounds. I lost track. But uh, he uh, seemed to make the most out of his minutes today. Yeah, he did. And we were talking earlier when Jay had called Easterwood that he's just so relatable that a lot of people love him because it's kind of like it's them out there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so, you know, overall, um, we withstand their play. The, the, they got the – when they cut the one, you filled it a little bit. Um, like they were going to make a little bit of a run, but uh, we came back. I think answered with five straight. Trey Donaldson, Trey Donaldson five straight after that, mm. and then after that, you could see the you could see the uh, Florida team kind of deflated. They got um, they got almost all their effort in to cut it down to one, and when we started rolling back. Their legs just you could tell their legs were just out of it past that. Hey, are uh, you in a Tesla? I am about to go charge a little bit before I head home. Hey, we had a we had a call from a Tesla <laughs> yesterday from Gators. Really? It's exciting. Weeks isn't a fan. I'll, I'll let him uh, go next. I'm a little hoarse. So I'll let him speak a little bit. What up, Weeks? How you doing, bro? Good, man. Living life. Good. Are you from uh, Are you from the Goat Madison, or where are you at? No, I live in Noonan. Oh, Noonan. Where we Noonan. got other, We got some great bunks in Noonan, bro. For real. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Uh, married a Peachtree City girl, so we're we're down there. That's where Jeff Shepard's from, too. Yeah. You know yep. who that is? Uh, what? Do you know who that is? Uh uh-uh. He played at Kentucky and his son's Reed Shepherd. He plays at Kentucky now. He's really good. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, anyway. Reed Shepard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. Anyway, yeah. Auburn so, Tigers victorious and you're pretty fucking fired up, aren't you? We we are. We are. We uh passed a lot of uh empty Kentucky bars. They had like two or three <laughs> Kentucky bars running out with like six people in them. It was pretty sad. Fuck them. So I thought of you. I thought of you when I saw that. Hell yeah, you should think of me. Fuck them. <laughs> All righty. Well, it was, a, it was a good victory. Um, we, uh, I think we're gonna make it hot. Hopefully, get a three seed and uh, take it all the way. So that's what I'm talking I appreciate about. Appreciate. All right, East. As we drive home. I appreciate you, bro. And Weeks, appreciate you uh, calling in too, bro. Yeah. Man. All right. Thanks, JG. I right, see you guys. Bye. There he is, Easterwood, calling in from the uh, the Tesla. Uh, looks like Blake says he's Easterwood disappoints me driving a Tesla. Wait, what? CJ says Teslas are just no, but CJ himself drives a uh, an electric car. So I don't know. That's uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a little bit. 
Interesting to me. Mobile alum, I didn't get an answer you uh, on your super chat earlier. Will this help with AJ's recruitment? I think it will. But remember now that AJ's got a thing about he doesn't want to play for a blue blood. So I better be careful when I describe Auburn as a blue blood. He don't want to hear that. He has had a conversation, at least one that we know of, with Jabari, in which Jabari said, yo, Auburn is uh, a really good place for you to be. Jabari is a huge, huge, huge advocate of Auburn University. And also uh, of Bruce Pearl in this program in general. Uh, CJ corrects me to say he drives a hybrid. There is a difference. All right, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Crocky Poo jumps into the super chat as well. We're going to be uh, dealing with Crocky Poo more as the day goes on because uh, we're going to probably take a break here in a little bit and then we're going to come back for the uh, bracket announcement. And Crocky Poo, uh, who is uh, truly a master of the um, statistical models within the basketball world, something I'm, I'm a fan of, but Crocky Poo is even past me. Uh, he just gives me a ward and mingle JGT, but hopefully we're going to be hearing from Crocky Poo either on the horn or just in the chat later. Uh, as we break down Auburn's situation uh, in the NCAA tournament. I think they're going to three gonna get a three seed. Uh, Crocky Poo's thinking four. That probably means you should lean toward four, but because uh, Crocky Poo definitely knows what time it is when it comes with that. Uh, the problem asks, what's uh, what's wrong with a Tesla? I, nothing that I know of. I would love to drive a Tesla. <laughs> I drive a Hyundai as it stands, so... Uh, if I had uh, access to a Tesla, I would definitely be driving it. No doubt about it. Uh, Chris M says Bruce and Janai were <laughs> wearing them nets. I guess the uh, press conference has started. Michael A jumps in. Michael A has been awesome all week uh, here with us. Uh, first super chat for an SEC tournament championship. My man, that's what I'm talking about right there. Uh, you've been great all week, Michael A. Thank you for uh, jumping back with us today as well. Um, <laughs> you've been great in the chat, and we have really, really like you being here. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you uh, throughout this run that Auburn's about to go on in the NCAA tournament. Aubie Laker jumps in as well, a uh, esteemed member of the Bunker community. Sometimes can be a little pugilistic, I would say, on the Bunker, but we appreciate him nonetheless. He says, War Eagle, awesome win. Give him an applause for that bad boy as well. Aubie Laker. And a Michael A. jumping in with some super chats there. Mobile alum asking, uh, where do we go in the dance? So... The prevailing opinion, I would say, is probably West. But that was when Auburn was a four seed, uh, probably going to Spokane out that way. But I think I'll, me and Ber, me and Bergesile, please stop, Solo Tigre. You actually tricked me with that. Me and Crocosile, whose opinion I respect very much on these things, Crocky thinks that Auburn's going to remain a four, in which case they probably would go West. But I think they've moved up to a three, in which case they might get upgraded to the east region but the problem is that then you're you're gonna you might end up having to deal with UConn and uh potentially according to Joe Lenardi uh, Iowa State which is a team you really don't want to fuck with right now uh they just trashed skull dragged Houston uh in their conference final and that was a really good conference by the way uh beat them by 25 or something like that in their conference championship game so I I don't really want to mess with Iowa State so I'm thinking three. Crocosile's thinking four. Uh, uh, Howard, what's up, bro? I'm so glad to see you here, bro. You're uh, you're big with us during our football shows. Glad to see us here uh, with one of our basketball shows. I agree, not getting the two. It will be a three or a four, yeah. I think Auburn deserves a two, but it's for whatever reason, there's been a big lag between where Auburn sits in these statistical profiles because Auburn's been top ten, really top five in the Ken Palm for most of the season. And then in the net, top 10 the whole year, really. And yet never in the top 10 of the AP poll or whatever. I just feel like there's been a there's been a gulf between a delta. Between where Auburn's statistical profile is and where people actually consider Auburn to be. And I think maybe that's going to play into the, how this NCAA tournament seeding works out. But uh, to me, I think they're a two. But they're going to end up probably getting a three. Crocky Poo thinks four. In fact, Crocky Poo goes one step further. Says, I don't think the site changes between three or four. Most likely Spokane, then Salt Lake, an outside shot at Pittsburgh. Of course, Ben Wolk covered Auburn uh, f- for us from the 2019 tournament, and he went to Salt Lake. Auburn played, I believe, in Kansas City first round, and then Salt Lake could have been opposite of that, and then ended up, obviously, in Minnesota for the for the Final Four, which was fun. 
Matt N says they should take everything into account. I agree completely. Uh, this Auburn team uh, has, has accomplished a whole hell of a lot this season. We got Chip Chip on the line. What's up, Chip Chip? Yes, you do. War Eagle. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Word, Chip. It's great to have you on the line again. Yeah, man. How about that game? Fuck yeah, man. That's all I have to say about that game. Beating the shit out of Florida yeah, and winning an yeah. SEC title. I'm all about it. Yep, man. They handled business in the second half. It looked a little dicey there at the start, but, man, they, they took it over. Damn right. That's so, what I'm talking about. I know you're fired up, man. The nuts dropped again. <laughs> yeah, they, and they did. Got dragged. Yeah, they listen, man. They were really good in the first half. Kind of sucked in the first, I don't know, three or four minutes of the second half, and then they picked it up and fucked them up. That's what happened. Yeah, man. I was with everybody else. We should have been leading that game by fifteen or twenty at halftime if they don't throw it out of bounds on all the breaks and get any kind of like minimal foul calls against Florida. We blow that out in the first half and cruise home. But I know. I guess they had to make it interesting for TV. <sighs> you know, TV money, whatever. <laughs> but it is what it is. Hey, man. They so got you, the nets and they got the rings. You are a, uh, you're an Auburn fan. You're an Auburn graduate. I, I know you, and you're very into Auburn. Um, is this your favorite basketball team, uh, you know, individually uh, each year? Is this your favorite Auburn version? I have to say I like the 19 team a tad bit better uh, just for how efficient those guys were. But I like this team a lot too. They're close number two. They got I love the defense. Defense is never fun to watch, so people say, but these guys are when they play it. Yeah. They and they're really they good at it. And it. It just frustrates the hell out of teams when they can't do what they want. Damn right. And they did that today, man. I mean defense turned into offense, particularly in that second half today, and they were able to transition them out of the game, really. Sure enough. Damn right. Well, hey, man, I just wanted to call and say War Eagle to everybody and I uh, hope can't wait to see you guys and the other listeners that are attending down here in Orange Beach. I'm headed out from the place now. I've been doing some work and prep. Getting it ready, huh? Yeah, a little bit at a time, slowly but surely. Gotcha. All right, Chip Chip, appreciate you, bro. Yeah, War Eagle, everyone. See you, man. There he is, Chip Chip. For those of you who don't know, Chip Chip uh, hosts our uh, official bunker uh, Orange Beach shindig. We had our first annual last year, and it was a, a huge uh, win for everybody who attended. Those of you who didn't attend, it was a loss. But for those who attended, it was a W. And we're going to do it again this year on the 13th of April. It's going to be down there in Orange Beach and a Chip Chip. Uh, well, we have the details up on the top of the uh, bunker. I've got it pinned up there. Uh, so I will be there for sure, obviously. And uh, my wife, uh, a.k.a. administrative assistant, will be there as well. And we appreciate Chip Chip for everything he does for that, and we're going to do our very best to support him and uh, back him up on that because he, he does a lot of this kind of on his own because he just loves the bunker, and he loves Auburn. He loves folks who love Auburn. So there you go. Uh, CJ says he will see uh, Chip Chip and OBA. Of course, CJ and his dad were uh, important parts of the first annual event that was in Orange Beach last year. His dad took a bourbon nap, and uh, CJ stepped up to uh, represent the uh, family uh, as as uh, number 19 was taking a break. But uh, a reprieve, some would say. A respite, others would say. But I kept it going. JG was wobbling, but I was still standing strong. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, what else we got <laughs> What else we got to break down here? We've had great calls from J-Head, B-Matt, uh, Easterwood called in with Weeks, 12, and also, of course, just now Chip Chip. I may end up taking a break here in a minute um, because we're gonna we're gonna transition into the NCAA tournament thing. Uh, we'll find out. I think that show goes live at five. Live at five. It's, I feel like that could be great for news. Uh, we could do that at five, and then we'll we'll pick it back up and take a look at where Auburn's gonna go in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Crocky Poo, who, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, someone we uh, whose opinions we very much respect on this issue is going to keep an eye out. And uh, when we uh, find out where Auburn's going to be going, take a look at these teams that Auburn could be facing, will be facing, and then take a look at what the path looks like to the uh, Sweet 16. So that's very exciting. Hornacious says he's got incriminating pics of number 19 from last year. Technically, you've got incriminating pictures of me as well because I was smoking a cigarette. Uh, when I took my picture with uh, BP Rockman. No, it was you and me and BP Rock. No, hold on. 
Did you take the picture? I've got it was me, you, number nineteen, and BP Rockman. Uh, Cast DL3 says, uh, oh, D Lucky's calling in. He was there today at the arena. D Lucky, what's up, bro? What's good, JG? Word, are you on your way home? I am. And I know you're feeling really satisfied, aren't you? Uh, I'm good and satisfied. Yeah, you are. You had a chance to be inside the arena today when uh, Bruce Pearl and his team laid their nuts on Florida once again. Thoughts? Uh, it was phenomenal. Uh, great atmosphere. Um, Neville North was an accurate description. Uh, I, I originally estimated that an 80-20 split. It might have been closer to 90 to 10. Uh, it, I think it paid off for sure. I think, uh, I think we got it in a stretch there where we, uh, we could not stop Florida's penetration. And, uh, once we got a little bit of momentum and, and got to run out a couple of times, I think they fed off that energy to, to, to get the lead, lead back out from one to, what, eight, nine? Yeah. Then kind of stretched it a little bit more from there. Mm-hmm. What was uh, that? Who, was big, big adjustment. Big, big adjustment was uh, we went to a zone. I think it might have been a one, one, three. It was, it was something something more. Trey kept running, running side to side. So it wasn't really a true two three, but I think I think they've scored like four possessions in a row just with their guard driving straight down the middle. And then once we came out in the zone, that kind of shut that down and I don't think they had any other answers. Yes, you're right. They got up eight nine and then just kind of ran them out, bro. And it was nice to see. Because Auburn, uh, we love watching Auburn win titles. Absolutely. Hopefully everybody's gonna celebrate tonight a little bit. Are you? Of course I am. Hell yeah! You gonna drink? Are you gonna drink some brown water? Uh, amongst other things. Oh, celebration, campaign, celebration, JG. Is this? We were talking earlier to Chip. Chip, he thought he liked the nineteen team just a little bit more than this one. Where do you stand? Where does this team stand in your all-time Auburn favorite uh, favorite Auburn basketball teams? Um, the Lexi Junior asked me a similar question. I think they are very similar, um, with the difference being. I think this team is a better defensive team by a notch, and I think the, the 19 team is probably a better shooting team. Maybe not necessarily scoring, but a better shooting team by a notch. So I think they're really close to me. I, I don't. We'll see where this one plays out, but they're they're really close. Yeah, this team is a lot of fun. They score a lot, like you said. They score a lot. They don't necessarily shoot as well. They don't have any 40 percent shooters, right. but they get the ball in the bucket. Yeah, we didn't have we didn't have. We didn't have the post game on the 19 team that we have on this, but the 19 team could shoot the ball from almost anywhere on the court. Um, Tuma was kind of the only uh, legitimate down low post. Uh, yeah. A lot of times, you know, Wiley would, would he was tough. He was, he was, uh, he was a little, uh, he could finish at times. His hands got better at the end, but he was, he was tough to, to score early on in his career. But so, it, it, it's a fun team to watch, though. This one right here. It is the, uh, the defense. Uh, like I said, played a played a huge part in this one because uh, we just we just stalled out a lot of. Uh, I saw somebody else say it. We're going for a lot of home runs and grand slams instead of just uh, settling for some singles and some doubles. And then instead of kind of getting the game over with early, we kind of let them hang around with some turnovers and these buckets. And then they they did a great job. Uh, Golden did a great job coming out of half. Uh, like I said, with adjustments, of getting the, getting the ball in his guard's hand and let him just drive. Because uh, I, I hate it, but Aiden Aiden could not stay in front of him, and uh, he, he went to work. So they were able to kind of work through that. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, Aiden didn't have his best game. Yeah, like, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he had the one three. Um, that was you know it was good to see that ball, but. He, he battled. He just didn't have. Uh, like I said, it just he, he played well. I would say he played average in the first half. He got to a really rough start in the second half. But Trey came in and tournament Trey showed up. Um, he had what two threes, at, at least two. Um, a couple of nice uh, drives and pull ups, uh, and he calmed down from his turnovers because he had the uh, he had the yips with the ball in the first half. So yeah. he got those out and uh, paid off for us. Word. Hey man, I'm so glad you and your family got to see that in person. That's that's gonna be huge for Deuce, man. Huge. Yeah, yeah. I think 
think uh, I think he was pretty excited about it. So it was Mrs. D. Lucky and Girl D. Lucky. Hey, that's what I'm talking. Well, I don't want to say their names, but I know who they are. Yeah, where? There you go. All right. I'm going to probably wrap it up here in a minute, D-Lucky, because well, I, I still got to take a minute off before we get to the, the bracket show. <laughs> yeah, do that and hydrate. Yeah, do it's probably a good idea. We'll talk a little later. All right, bro. Have a safe trip back. All right, appreciate you, man. See you, man. Bye. Morning, I'm Eagle, everybody. There he is. D-Lucky, what a stud. I didn't want to say his wife's name, but I, I, she's awesome. And I met his daughter twice. She's awesome, too. Auburn graduate, by the way. She is. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see, Cameron C. jumping in as a diehard Gator fan. Congrats to Auburn on the win. Let me get let me post this one up. Uh, and hope we meet again. We didn't play our best, losing our center as well, which hurt us. So congratulations on the win, guys. I think all of us here would say uh, best of best thoughts and vibes and prayers to uh, Micah Handlock. And, um, that's really unfortunate. It sucked, and I think everybody thinks that sucks. Um, yeah, that's that's that, that's bad. And I hope he hope he comes along, man. We'll be pulling for him in this rehab and the next year for sure. Uh, obviously Todd Golden is somebody that uh, most people in the Auburn sphere, at least the learned people in the Auburn sphere, like him and respect him. He's a stud, and you guys, Cam, uh, did a, an outstanding job hiring him, and he's going to take Florida to some heights that you guys haven't seen since Billy Donovan. So uh, good for you, and I appreciate you coming over here in peace. We're not out here talking shit about Florida, as you have probably seen and heard. Uh, Anthony R says, JG, I think we're headed out west, brother. What do you think? I don't necessarily think that. Now, Crocky Poo's opinion matters as much as mine. is probably more, actually. Uh, he's really good on this. And uh, he thinks Auburn probably is going to be going west. I think Auburn's going to go east as a three seed. Uh, Blake R says, did not see the injury play. Talking about Micah's uh, injury. What happened as far as uh, play goes to Gossett? I don't think he got touched or anything. I think he just kind of went up to grab a ball. And landed awkwardly on his leg, and it snapped. I mean, I don't really know. It's really that simple. Um, what really scared me was that he was bleeding out of his leg, you know, like the kind where you like you cut yourself and it bleeds. So it was a compound fracture of his lower leg, and then it was actually sticking out of the skin, so not good. I was encouraging everybody to not watch the replay of that because you just don't want to see that. And uh, I don't give a shit who it is. You don't ever want to see that, especially not a good kid like Micah Henlockton. So a guy that Auburn recruited, Auburn wanted last year uh, coming out. Uh, he hit the transfer portal from Marshall, part of the uh, thundering herd or hundering turd, as some would say. Uh, ended up at Florida in a high, hotly contested, uh, contested battle. And, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. So he's going to have a little bit of a uh, – He's going to have some tough days ahead, just kind of not being able to play for his team will be the first thought, and the next thought for him is going to be, you know, rehabbing that injury and coming back better than ever. So uh, we know from firsthand that Anthony McLemore, who suffered a similar injury uh, during the 19 season, I think it was, a compound fracture of his lower leg like that, and uh, he was able to come back and be a nice contributing part of uh, the subsequent team. So, you know, there's a good – there's good. Uh, we know that they can come back. Uh, there you go, Cameron. Appreciate you coming by. Uh, Hornacious said something earlier that made me laugh, and I forgot what it was. Oh, he's drinking pink panty pulldowns. I am interested in what this drink is. But it sounds like something that I probably would not be drinking myself. But that's fine. I'm not going to judge you. It's fine. It, everything's totally fine. So here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to take a break. We've been streaming for two and a half hours right now. We did. Uh, we picked up at halftime, went through the second half. We've done post game. I had a chance to hear great calls from Jay Head, from BMAT, from Easterwood, from D Lucky. Also, Chip Chip called in. We love him as well. Uh, we're going to take a quick break while I hydrate. <laughs> we're going to go offline. And then we're going to come back uh, around the five o'clock hour and uh, find out where Auburn's going to go in the NCAA tournament and then start breaking down their path to the Final Four and national championship, and also just whoever's in their pod and that kind of a thing. So at that point, we will kind of dig a little bit deeper into what's going on, and we'll continue talking about how great this uh, this team is and how much fun they've been to cover. So we're going to take a quick break here. I, I don't know, 90 minutes, something like that. We'll be back with you guys around the 5 o'clock hour. i got to hydrate, y'all, for real. My wife's been uh, dealing with my mom all this afternoon, so I want to check in with her. Hopefully you guys come back to our stream after that. If not, I still love you guys, and we will be here talking about it. So until then, keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. I love you guys. Peace. Austin jumps in with a super chat here late. I want to make sure I get this called out. Appreciate you jumping in, Austin. Uh, says this tournament was one of the best coaching performances by BP ever. 
He knew what he was doing when he built this team. Thank you, JG. Let's get into the madness. Ward Emmy will give you an applause on that. I do think the BP, you know, he said he was crying because his dad wasn't here to see this. And I think a part of that is because he's so proud of this coaching job for the reasons that you mentioned. That I think when he started this season, he didn't feel like this was his best team. Um, and now he looks at it and he goes, I think this might be my best team. He just wishes his dad was here to see it. And it's sad in a way, but. You know, those of us who are older, you kind of know the, the pain. Austin, I appreciate you jumping in here late, brother. And I hope to see you when we come back in the 5 o'clock hour to take a look at that bracket and see where Auburn goes. So we'll see you guys then. Until then, keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Let's make great decisions, and I will see you back here in a little bit. Peace. <laughs> 